All right, now we're live with the All Invitational um, Group D qualifiers. Uh, this is the um, hopefully a fantastic set of games with us ahead. And today I have with me Siegfried, who I'm going to ask him to introduce himself for a second time because <laughs> we're pro. Yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Glad to be back. Glad to. Um, I, we were just talking about how this was Shazam's fourth. Uh, all invitational since he's taken over and it, you're saying that there's been a lot of excitement behind it and people are really getting behind this tournament now yeah it's it's just really awesome to see like everyone seems to be really like just excited to play, play their games and excited to find out who wins um it's not even just like people are excited for themselves anymore it's like we're just excited about the tournament in general and you know about having good games so today, and everybody can see it on the top, the kind of the order of the games we're looking at here, and um, Frogs, not Fugs. Um, <laughs> Frogs, Got Quail, Quiet, and Nicro are in this group. Uh, who do you think is our is our favorite for escaping out of here? Uh, definitely Nicro. Um, he is a GM player, so like I guess this kind of the harsh reality is he, he is Grandmaster, so he's bound to be uh, a lot better than the other players in the group. But uh, I'm not sure if is he playing random this season or is he playing Protoss? Mm, I'm um, not sure. Actually, let's take a look. Some of the I can take a look at some of these games that we have. Uh, he's he's listed as playing Protoss, so this that makes it even worse for the other players in the group. I feel because um, Protoss is his main race. Sure. So maybe he's trying a lot harder this time. Uh, maybe he wants to win some of that bank money so that Shazam is offering. <laughs> so for. Um... So for Grand Masters, I'm tracking two of them in this tournament then. So that's going to be Nicro and Manipulation? Uh, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really call uh, Manipulation a Grand Master player just because he only got it like for like a day or something as Zerg. Okay. Um, so let's see who we got. So uh, so far we got Nicro. Um, we also have Technical uh, or um, whatever he goes by now. I don't sure. know what he changes. I think it was Technical, too. at least yeah. in the, the groups. Yeah, uh, Grip is GM. Uh, Riser's GM. Uh, so we got at least four. Oh, wow. Uh, that makes this a very intense tournament. Yeah. What, what, do you, what does somebody like a, like a medium to high diamond even... Um, how do you get that motivation even coming in and competing in this level? Uh, I would say, like, it, it very much varies on the person. I know, like, I guess my own personal motivation would just be, like, to show everyone how good I am. Like, it doesn't matter if you win or not, but, like, it, you know, if people watch you play and you're able to take a game off of a GM player or at least put up a good game. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think that can really give someone a lot of confidence and, you know, just make them feel good about themselves. I can see that. Um, kind of crossing those fingers to those good groups and those good games. Maybe throw out a little bit of cheese. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, the first game we have, and we're already loading this lobby, is going to be Backwater Ellie, and that is Frogs versus Got Quail. Um, according to our ELO, it looks like Got Quail is a, a moderate favorite here. Uh, ranked five versus frogs 13 do you think that's on par with their skill uh yeah i would say so but uh, i guess an important thing to uh, note about frogs is he's very infamous for taking out uh, players much better than him uh, actually taking out riser and in, in all and taking two games off of grip in the quarterfinals of uh i think it was the last one mm -hmm. so both of those are gm players that frogs has <laughs> taken out as a diamond so um frogs definitely has an upset potential okay. uh really depends on what frogs is prepared we'll go ahead and uh hit this watch button and uh we'll, we'll get into this first game we'll jump right into it because we do have we have six sets to go tonight um and i, I guess you have some some people coming over so i'm gonna hold on to you as long as i can and i think okay. <laughs> is even gonna join us at some point so yeah i don't know when everyone's showing up but i'm sure we'll hear them <laughs> Can Ribeye jump into this chat without being pulled down? Uh, I don't think so. Do I need to drop him in right now or what? No, I'll just ask him uh, oh. between sets. Oh. He said he wanted to come in when he was. Oh, right, right, right. That would, so. that would make more sense. All right, so <laughs> spawning in the bottom right hand corner in the light pink, the Zerg. It is Frugs. And up here we have in the top left. Playing in the red, it is Got Quail. I love that name, Got Quail. It's it's just original. It's yeah. Not, uh, 
Like, frogs, frogs seems to be like a nonsense word. You hear those every once in a while. Quiet is just a, it's a noun or a verb. It's just a standard English word. That's a very popular naming convention for, for StarCraft players. But it got quail? I could just imagine the ad campaign, like, wiping bits of quail off of your quail mustache. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not, like, I'll be honest, I have no clue what quail means. But <laughs> It's a bird. It is a bird. It's a bird? Yeah. Okay. So I'm assuming, the... like, got milk, got quail. Oh, yeah. I guess uh, that's kind of interesting because it makes you think about like why he decided to come like use this name and also why he decided to stick with it so long. Actually, that's a good point. How did you come up with Siegfried? Um, my it's actually from an anime that I watched called The uh, Legend of the Galactic Heroes. One of the characters in it was named uh, Ra uh Siegfried. Uh, sorry, uh, Siegfried Kirkeyes. Okay. And uh, I just named myself after him. Like, because if you just told me that was your real name, I'd be like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. It's a name. Have you ever, how, how hard do you have to compete for that name? Like, when you sign up for, like, online things, your characters and games, do you ever run into that as a common common problem? Or yeah, because uh, there's, a, there's a lot of, or there's a significant amount of, like, things that Siegfried has been used in. Like, it's a Final Fantasy character. Um, there's the Siegfried line, which was a... Uh, defensive line in World War One and World War Two for the Germans. And uh, then Siegfried is also like a Nordic, like, mythical hero or something. Okay. So uh, those are all ones I've heard. Uh, I guess we should probably talk about what's happening in the game right it, now. It though. does It does look like the Lings are dodging <laughs> all the, the Overlord vision, and Frog's just yeah. going to get here first. Okay, so both players have opted not to um, mine resources this game and instead just kill things. Okay, uh, this is going to be kind of difficult to follow because they are fighting on two different sides of the map right now. It looks like all the action is going to be concentrated over here by Got Quail's base. And uh, both these players do have Bailey nests. And it does, so this is going to get pretty spicy. It does look like uh, Got Quail was hoping to just cut off reinforcements over here and poke at the natural. Uh, he's getting a little bit of damage done there, and he's chasing the opponent back with kind of a superior Ling numbers. He was able to, to cut off reinforcements. Um, so the fight is going to shift down here to the bottom right with uh, a couple banelings being morphed. Yeah, um, and Frogs is actually in a pretty uh, tough position Same. right now, I feel, uh, trying to go for that hatchery. Because that's a lot of lings from Godquill, and all those resources that Frogs used building that hatchery weren't used to make lings. And now we see an overwhelming amount of lings in the base here. They're going to fight right by these baneling nests. Uh, pretty good trades from Godquill going down. And all of Frog's lings are dead. Now it's just drones versus lings. Not a great fight. Hoping to get some good Baneling connections here. Going to push him off as this queen's fighting for her life. Drones coming in here to try to save him. There goes the queen. Relatively okay Baneling hits. That might be what he yeah. needed. And, uh, uh, yeah, Gawquil, I think, can just continue, like, being aggressive from this point. Or you can go back and, you know, stay at home. Uh, he just needs to take, like, more good fights. And I think he's definitely in a very secure position in this game. Actually, interesting move here by uh, Frogs. He decided to take an additional worker to try to close that gap in what he knows is going to be an ever-increasing um, mineral gathering rate. Uh, squeeze in one drone here and there while he continues to produce uh, lings. It's going to be a failing fight. He manages to get one that was already low health. Yeah, and uh, I feel like Gakuel is like all the initiative right now. Um, I don't think Frogs, like, you think he's overextending, pushing more than he needs to right now. Yeah, I feel like, well, like at this point, I think Frogs needs to go in and like kill him, but it's just going to be super hard unless he gets like amazing bailing connections. Because like with that uh, second base coming up from Gakuel, he has the base advantage, he has the drone advantage, he has the unit advantage. Um, Ooh. Oh. He definitely has a unit advantage now. We see the armies 8 and 14. Four more links being produced for Frogs, but 10, now 6, and then 8 again for, uh, for, oh, excuse me, got Quail. This is a, that was a huge jump, a huge lead. Yeah, um, kind of, I think a, a bit of bad, uh, or I wouldn't say bad, but just like mistimed hatchery at the start there. Because mm -hmm. you could kind of see, like, it's almost like a killer instinct thing, right? Like, Frogs goes for that hatchery, and Got Quail has his units over by his base at the start. And so Got Quail sees this, and he decides, okay, Frogs is, you know, he's going for the economy play, he's going for a hatchery. Uh, the only thing that uh, Got Quail, oh. holy shit. Oh. The only thing that uh, Got Quail can really do there is either expand and be a bit behind, or just pump out the units and kill Frogs. 
and that's what he decided to do. And it worked. He he stayed he stayed ahead the entire time in, in workers and army. He got the better bane hits. The, the even the bane hits from uh, frogs were in defense and in desperation and holding on, um, but the ones from Gakuel were decisive and and game ending as we saw there right at the end. Yeah. So uh, DVZ is definitely a very hard matchup to play uh, consistently. Huh. You have to you have to be so like crisp all the time, like always on point. Like I, he's, he's... <laughs> I just refuse to play it. I I I, I, <laughs> I, I don't quit in GG automatically, but I do just roach up and like, all right, come on, you're gonna either you're either gonna cheese me and win, or we're gonna have a fight. Yeah. Um. So you know, hello, hello, Ritters. Uh, I've just decided to start calling you Ritters since I can't pronounce your name. Thanks for hanging out. Um. I'm going to go ahead and go into the next one. It's going to be Neon Violet Square. Um, I believe this is the one with those holographic squares in the middle that make units do funky things, and we see some interesting yeah. fights happen there. Um, that could definitely be interesting. Trying to get us around is definitely uh, difficult for some units. You can kind of give ranged units uh, a bit of an advantage in the center. Uh, yeah. Roach fights, if they get there <laughs> around those uh, part, uh, parts of the map, will definitely be pretty weird. Hmm. Right, going into this map now, um, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner again in the light pink, it is Frugs. And up in the top left, we have in a red, it is Gotquail. It looks like he's hoping to close this series out with one more game. He is, um, he does have the ELO advantage here. He is the favored for this match. Um, it looks like nothing too spooky right now. I'm not seeing uh, any 12-12s. But... Yeah, this is looking pretty stock standard here. Um, like, even if one of these players goes for a pool soon, like, it's just, that's the normal timing to get a defensive one, right? Sure, like, yeah. It's not, uh... You follow it up immediately with the Nexus, and you have a good defensive base of lings. Uh... Okay, so, uh, yeah. Not really gonna have, or see too much uh, impactful stuff going down right now, just hatcheries. So let's talk about this map then. So I do like this back base. Uh, it's safe. It's very safe, but it does have um, a lot less minerals added. He can choose to expand there for his third, or he can go up to the north closer to the enemy for a full-sized base. Um, just up to the left or right side of the map, depending on which way you're looking at. Um, do you have a favorite third on this map? Um, I, I think most of the time, if I'm, pl if I'm a Zerg player, uh, I'm going to take the one that's like either down below, um, depending on the matchup. Like sure. in ZVT, I probably wouldn't take that one. But ZVZ, I think that's fine to take. Um, or the one up to the north. Sure. Uh, just just because like the creep spread is more important in most matchups. And also, I feel like uh, it's just better to have access to more minerals. Um, and it also, too, like it kind of creates a bit of um, un uncertainty in your opponent. Because like... Once you get that third base, your opponent, unless they've like continued to scout, doesn't know if you have that pocket base or not. Sure. So just like I, I find it very annoying, like when I don't know if my opponent has like, you know, that fourth base. Whether in he's the back. got that like half base worth of minerals or not. Yeah, because you don't know if he's gearing up for like a huge free base push off of something, or if he's macroing up behind that and you need to take another base of your own, or so you know. What I did see yesterday, is Protoss took this wall here in the natural base kind of secured himself and then took the back base until he felt more comfortable extending forward against a zerg at least against you know a zerg an opponent who has the ability to to really maneuver around the base once he gets you know link speed uh, yeah i i can definitely see that for protoss especially with like how prevalent um lings are in the matchup right now like we we've seen scarlet winning i am pyongshang pretty much off the back of uh ling floods so like that's definitely on the back of every protoss player's mind we are going to see this third base uh, as it went down for Frog start to get uh, some light harassment. Uh, but we do have Lings and Queens meeting the opposing force by Frogs, not able to get any kind of uh, significant damage. Not the same kind of damage we're seeing down here on the hatchery. That's It's got to be responded to. There has to be a response. And you see a couple Lings coming up here as they got the cancellation and the drone saved itself on the extractor. Uh, yeah, that's really unfortunate, actually. Um, if Frogs had kept that hatchery up, I think he definitely would have been fine because he did delay Got Quill's drone from building that third hatch for you know a couple of seconds there. Sure, it evened out but, a little bit, but now Got Quill's got his third a little faster. He's got a couple more units have made better trades. Here comes some Banelings. Looks like he's gonna try to poke again. 
Yeah, um, you know, not not really the most impactful thing. One thing I was kind of, I guess, a bit disappointed by that Frogs didn't do was he let his Lings just stand there and fight. And uh, I think it would have been better for him to keep them alive and try to deny that third base for as long as possible. Small nitpick, but like, you know, I like cute plays like that. Sure. It, and sometimes it is those little things that matter when you get to uh, you know certain levels. We might still be at the point where just macro and, and pushing back these attacks is enough. He's going to split his links here. I kind of sent him in two different directions. Yeah, and... Um... Ooh. Good okay, we see a lot of units coming out of Got Quill here. Um, Frogs is down in workers and units at the moment. Well, that Baneling hit evened it out a little bit, but no, you're right. The, the workers are definitely going to show the difference here. He's in the main base right now. Um, oh, that's going to make it, things even worse. Uh, nice hold position on those drones to kind of freak out the Ling uh, AI. I, I, I agree, but it looks like he was uh, he got his queen stuck on it too. Yeah. The queen was uh, attacking for several seconds there. It was a nice attempt. It was. I, I like it, and it was a nice little pathway. They're no longer going through units. They do act as a yeah. wall. And there's the GG. Yeah. I guess um, not not completely uncalled for there. He was down significantly in drones. I would have liked to uh, see it played out a little more, but yeah, that, I guess that was a good couple of couple of engagements there. Yeah. Especially like when you're in a mirror matchup, I feel like, you know, the second you lose like one worker, you're just like, oh shit, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm behind. You just start freaking out. I did go a little out of order, so let me make sure I'm marking my... So next we're going to look at Quiet and, and Nicro. So this first match was 2-0 uh, and got Quail's favor. So next is Quiet and Nicro, which is the most disparity, at least on our all-invitational ELO, that we have for the night. It's... Well, no, not, not quite for the night, but um, Quiet is 34 and Nicro is 6. And you say Nicro is kind of your favorite for this tournament, so... Yeah. Uh, what do you expect to happen here? Um, I guess I expect Quiet to probably get bopped, um, honestly. Uh, the biggest thing I think um, kind of hinders Quiet in this matchup is Quiet's not, like... He's, he's very much, like, a standard-ish player. Like, he doesn't really do, like, all-ins or, like, cheeses that often sure. from what I've seen of him. He's always doing, like you know, standard builds, he wants to get out some units and he wants to micro and he wants to play a man's game. And I think that almost like hinders him to an aspect in like a tournament where sometimes you have to look and see like, okay, this guy is better than me. My only objective here is to win. So what is my highest chance of winning, right? Like, as opposed to how do I like to play and how do I want to play this game? You kind of have to take it in two veins. Okay, I, I can see that. Rather than trying to be the gentleman, if you will, um, you have to think about some of the strategies uh, that are outside what you might consider uh, fair. Yeah, because like I think like realistically, like if you're a diamond player versus you know a GM like player, both playing your main races, um, like even if you say get a advantage playing macro against that player. It's still going to be very hard because the longer the game goes on, mm -hmm. the more mistakes you are likely to make and the fewer your opponent is likely to make. Um, so, like, that's why you see often, like, um, in things like Pro League, when that was around, like, you'd see lower tier players, like, uh, I can think of, like, Blaze from MVP or, like, a couple other players who would just only cheese and everyone knew they were going to cheese, but they still got games off of, like, great players. Sure. Like... I doubt anyone remembers Blaze, but he took games off of players like Life and um, like uh, Classic and like other good players like that. It's, it's that whole dilemma where you get to practice your cheese all the time, but your opponent doesn't necessarily get to defend against it all the time. So even though he knows it's probably coming, um, you might just have it worked out well enough just for that match. Uh, I, I like it, and I hope yeah. we see some of that here. Um, all the, uh, I will say in chat, Quiet Quiet was quite nervous about some of these games, so maybe this is one of them, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, I One thing I do know about Quiet is he's very prideful of his play. Mm -hmm. um, he really wants to be the best that he can be. And so, like, when he when he plays against someone who's, like, better than him, I feel like he, he feels like he's underperforming. And, like, that's definitely unfortunate because it's, like, you know, it's a relatable but unfortunate mindset. Sure. You, you always kind of want to strive to have that like super positive I'm here to improve mindset but it can it can be hard it can be, yeah it can beat you down 
All right, looks like we're gonna hit the hit this watch button. Our first map is Black Pink. Um, Black Pink. This is one single word, Black Pink. Yeah, like the K-pop group. Is that what it is? Is that what it's named I, after? I'm pretty sure. That's that's interesting, actually. I I, had, <laughs> I was trying to find it didn't have any like sci-fi feel to it. Um, all right, we are spawning in. We have a best of three. Hit that little zoom out button. And in the bottom left-hand corner, in the light blue, the Protoss, uh, one of the favorites for this group, Nitro. And our Terran player for this group, we have up in the top uh, right-hand position. It is quiet. So I'm definitely going to be rooting for quiet in these matches. I feel a little more connected, a little more personal. Uh kind of feel the personal dilemma as he uh, you know talked to me earlier yeah, he's, uh, he's the striving underdog you know he's looking to improve himself maybe he'll be and, the eagles in yeah. this matchup I thought everyone hated the eagles though eh, I don't know do they I I mean they've always kind of been my I'd say my team when I pay attention to football but it's not often enough and then uh. I forget about them until they you know are in a Super Bowl you know, once every 10 years, it looks like. <laughs> uh, I just remember when Sean posted, like, Go Eagles in the announcements tab one day. Everyone was, like, freaking out, getting pissed off. <laughs> Angry at him for being the end of the Eagles? Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, wow, everyone must hate the Eagles. I don't I don't think they're anything... Um, <laughs> they haven't been anything spectacular, but I guess they've had a really good season, so... Probably their best season, yeah. I would say, in many, many decades, seeing as how they won the Super Bowl. <laughs> Uh, I'm surprised Phil Duffy didn't catch on fire. Quite gonna lose that? Nope. Nah, he got his he got his little guy away. It does look like Nacro is uh He's going, he's going back in there. Oh well, is he? Oh here we go. <laughs> uh Nacro, something pretty standard. Uh but one of the most frustrating things in the world, by the way, is having here he comes again, uh oh, having your SCV picked on while it's trying to build. And he's gonna decide not to. Um uh, moving back around the map, checking nothing? You know, it seems yeah. man, he could be waiting uh, to see a faster, but that's definitely not a Terran thing to do. Maybe yeah, he might be. Yeah, maybe a proxy. It's the Reaper uh, checking. We'll see the gas for it soon. If there's, well, you'd think he'd put a pylon down already if he was going to proxy. Um, I don't know. He's just going to go back in. He uh, wait for that Reaper to come out, and now it looks like he's going to try to pick on this SCV. Uh, yeah, <laughs> which is some mind game level shit. Uh, no, it goes a belief. Just another scout. <laughs> Uh, we do see three barracks. There it is. Pick it on the SCV. Oh. Yeah, and uh, this is a very... I'm not sure if we could call this standard, because I feel like there's almost no standard PVT at the moment. But um, this is very macro-oriented PVT. Looks like a stalker just good. Good. the Reaper. Yeah, um, yeah I'm very interested to see the PVT? Reaper in this matchup, honestly. Uh, I feel like not a lot of Terrans go for Reapers anymore. Really, what would they do in this situation? Just leave the scout um, to a scan? Yeah, yeah. Well, normally, like you would SCV scout off to start, and then uh, I guess like you can get a Reaper if you're worried about proxies. But uh, I feel like a lot of times it's almost not worth it. We do have a proxy going down uh, over there in the top right. Well, maybe just a forward pylon for, for warping in. What is going to be? Let's count them, folks. Uh, one, two gates. Uh, Twilight Council. So maybe just a standard four gate as this stalker is kind of poking at these marines. Yeah, and this is kind of unfortunate. Uh, quiet, he doesn't have his units on hold command at the top there, so uh, they will get picked off. Yeah. yeah, this stalker is really low though. Kind of greedy from Mecco to let, uh, let that take so much damage. He did get two kills. Uh, shield start to recharge. You'll be able to go back in there again. We see the gateway coming down here to make this a, a decent forward position. Uh, a couple stalkers coming across the map to join it. So if we count. Robox faci uh, robotics facility rather than a fourth gate. Uh, warp is just now finishing up. We're going to see the transformation of those buildings as more stalkers coming to poke. A little bit of micro there to put the damage stalker in the back. Yeah. Um, I think this is just going to be some light aggression here. Uh, he has Blink coming up soon. And versus these th uh, three rocks openings, I feel like uh, Blink openers are still very good. Uh, you can kind of come up here and chip away at the Bioforce. Because um, I think the end game for a Terran going for these like 3x plays mm -hmm. is they want to get enough bio that they can go and be aggressive. But if you open Blink Stalkers, you can just pick away at the Terran bio to the point where Terran just doesn't feel comfortable leaving. 
Okay, I can see that. And they don't have the tools, utilities right now to, to siege up a tank or heal these marines. Uh, you gotta worry about, you know, stemming properly when Blink can just get them out of there successfully. Yeah, and like we see, like right now what's happening, yeah, quite, uh, he's very quick to GG as well. Is that another thing I guess I Very quick to tap out when he feels pressured. Yeah, but we've seen, like, that's not an all-in move by any means, uh, what Nitro did. That's mm -hmm. that's fairly standard. Um, the issue is that Quiet's bunker wasn't there, and uh, he had lost enough bio, like, early on. It's pretty tough dealing with, uh, like, early blink aggression with someone who has good micro and good macro, because a, a GM player is going to have a lot more stalkers out earlier on than, like, another diamond level player that will. I mean, so you're dealing with, like, an additional stalker when there would normally be three, you're seeing four, and that's a lot more to deal with? Is that what we're... Yeah, and plus, like, uh, I don't know what the number to one shot in Marine is. I think it's, like, four or something. But, you know, three stalkers versus four is a big difference because you can just run up, kill a Marine, run away, and repeat. Looks like um, Ribeye is home, so I'm going to pull this in and make this a tri-cast for a little bit. Cool. Well, or at least until you have to go. Oh, he can jump right hey. in. Hello there, Ribeye. No, I, uh, I pulled him in. Hello there, Ribeye. Speak. I'm coming in now. Guys. Okay. <laughs> I was just on this phone. Um, once you get in the load, up, we'll give you a few moments to load in the StarCraft. We're in the middle of our second game and our second game between Quiet and Nitro. So at this time, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to refill your drink, you got about a minute, minute and a half. Um, so what would you like to see out of Quiet this time? Um, I would definitely like to see him do, like, some sort of cheese. Um, I know, like, TVP is, like, uh, I, I guess, like, I don't mean to complain all the time, but I feel like TVP is a frustrating matchup, to say the least. Well, what race do you play? Uh, Terran. Okay, <laughs> got it. So, got it. For, from yeah. your perspective, very You should have, uh, like, you should have guessed this. Oh, I was about to. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's definitely, like, frustrating to play sometimes. Um, and I feel like there's, like, I hear Terran just complain about everything all the time, obviously, but... Uh, one thing I definitely hear a lot is like that cheeses are a bit harder in TVP because of like you know shield battery and like uh, stalkers are pretty good now. Yeah, but there's still like a lot of them that can work. Like you have uh, a lot of stuff you can do with cyclones early on that are still like as abusive as ever. Um, I know as a as a Terran, you kind of get in that mindset that you know you want to play you want to play uh, Marines or you want to play Mac and you want to do one or the other. Um, sometimes you just don't want to have to adjust and respond at least at, you know, my levels to different units. You just want your, you want your bread and butter to handle everything. You want your Marines, Marauders and Medivacs to just solve all problems. But sometimes you just need a Cyclone. Yeah. I kind of, I almost feel like, um, Cyclones are to TVP what Hellions are to TVZ. Like I can see it. They're like those early game units you need to bully the opponent back while you make your other units, you know, your bread and butter units. I, I guess the problem is it just feels like such a, a divided... Um, what is it? Like a, a divided tech path for, for, for Terran. You're either going to... At the beginning of your game, you're making that decision. It's either going to be mech or, or bio. And you don't want to respond. You don't want to change yeah. to it. Especially kind of uh, if we look at like just how people have, like played the game. Yeah, yeah. I feel like when Legacy came around and people were just opening like um, like the two and one all the time, mm -hmm. I feel like people almost like forgot how to like use Dude, early game units. I don't know why like, I, I'm not entering the lobby. It's mm -hmm. like entering lobby. It's stuck. Oh, uh, I can we can quit out and reinvite as a group. Well, no, I'm stuck, so I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm. Hold on, I might have to log out. So you guys do one game so far? We and by the way, yep. you you have a misspelling. Fuck, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, Fugs. Hi, Fugs. Fugs, Fugs. Um, his games are pretty fugly. <laughs> he's actually a really... He's a player that a lot of people are scared of in our clan because he's just really good at timings. and. But at, if you stop his timing, he kind of gets screwed up. But his timings are really crisp. And I, I think uh, it looked like he, he was... They were spot on. They were just not up to what Quail was doing to him at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So looks like we got you in. So. Oh, Nightcrawler is quiet. This should be a complete and utter stop. <laughs> <laughs> we, we watched the first game and it was uh, pretty brutal. Uh, yep. Quiet. Quiet's a very good player. Nightcrawler. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's fair. And I yeah. was talking about that earlier. There's, we have a lot of GMs in this clan and you know, why does a, di- a medium to high diamond decide to get into these games? And the answer sometimes is, um, because this is fun. I get to play too. Come on. I will. I know. And sometimes you get into a group like I did and you get through. <laughs> um, spawning in the bottom right hand corner, the light blue, the Protoss hoping to make this a double stomp. Nitro. I, and in the top left, we have the blue Terran. We have all ins quiet. My practice partner who kills me. Bam. Your practice partner. Yeah, he, he destroys practice me. Bunch well. He destroys me. Yeah, he's better than me. Yeah, no, but like literally, quiet got screwed. Like I got a group with um, which you guys watched. I got a group with Ultralisk, um, Burn, Terradin, Burn, and um. Uh, Catalyst. Burn. And Terradin beat me 2-1, but I came out of the group first place because Terradin screwed up, So, which is pretty funny. So I got lucky, and now I'm in another group where I actually got pretty lucky in that group, too. So you're saying you might make it to the round of eight when you I, there's a Yes. There is a 10-15% to 15% chance I get out of this group. Okay. I am definitely the underdog by far, but if I had to pick any of the groups... I would pick this one because the other groups had zero percent chance in both in both of these rounds. So, yeah. We do have a, a proxy uh, gateway coming down up here, nice and early for Nitro. It doesn't look like he's going to be taking it easy at all. On the other hand, it does look like Quiet is. Uh, oh wait, are we gonna see? All right, I don't want to say, speak too soon, but he is, as Jack Attack once put it, pooping his pants. Um, he is not doing any scouting. He's not gathering any information. He's gonna sit in his base and be very content to wait on this Reaper to come out, and that is going to cost them a little bit. I think that goes going to put a Stargate down here. Yeah, um, this definitely looks like it could be like 3-gate uh, Stargate. Uh, I'm not sure what build this like will be, though. Uh, it can be a lot of things. Um, it's, yeah, I think it's Stargate. He's getting enough gas. Can't wait, Stargate? We also, yeah, um, we also just getting this Reaper, yet. I think, is like... It's almost like a death sentence in some cases to like these very very early cheeses if you don't SCV scope. The Reaper is great at finding proxies and like scouting what your opponent's going into in the mid game. Well, the Stalker is going to unfortunately leave the base unprotected for a little bit. He's already got it uh, rallied over there. And oh, okay, never mind. He will catch the Reaper. This is uh, pretty fortunate for him. It's going to deny this information. It's going to prevent this Reaper from figuring out what's going on. Does he see that? Nope. Or, oh, wow. yeah, he just barely does. He, barely he just barely does. saw the pylon going down. And he's coming back. It's, to not, it's not a huge deal. Uh, oh, luckily, if he stops that from going... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, he cancel it. it. That is fortunate yeah. for him. That's terrible. Double shield okay. battery here. I've not yeah, seen a shield battery be yet. Super unfortunate. This is super terrible. He, uh, I mean, Nike was in an ter- uh, awesome position. I was about to say terrible, which is not true. <laughs> yep. Yeah, one Marine down already. That's uh, Zelt's pretty low, but um, Ooh, a not cyclone, the most impactful. As we were saying, he has Supply Block, though. As this next Cyclone is not building, he drops a Supply Depot to get that going. Yeah, uh, we do have a Bunker up now, which is going to be great for uh, Quiet. However, Shield Batteries heal a lot. Um, oh my gosh, that is disgusting what I just watched. Yeah. And he's not repairing the Cyclone, which is super important. Like, look, see those Stalkers? They're just going to kill that pretty much immediately. I think Quiet can be fine if he keeps repairing that Cyclone and letting it put out damage. Because, look, those Shield Batteries are half depleted, uh, yeah. pretty much. So, like, that's pretty significant. Um, and shield- back at home, wow. you see Nitro expanding, too. So, like, Nitro's definitely not completely committed to this. Pushing back that Reaper finishing warp. We're going to see new units coming in any second now being warped on this forward pylon as one entire shield battery is full on, near full on energy. Nope, bye Marine. Yeah. You can tell Nyko's really not watching this, uh, his uh, units at the front because he's just making sure to macro and expand behind this. We yeah, because it's like... Gonna come help. Oh, that'll be really, uh, really tilting for Quiet. You know, he's busy defending the front. Suddenly, Oracle runs in your mineral line. Yeah, and to be completely honest, learning like this is a great game to learn from if you want. If you're cheesing, like he cheesed, 
he canceled his natural. He's just standing out here, really just poking in every so often yeah. and macroing behind. Yeah. This is what people like me and I'm sure people on my level do not do. You you forgot you that you can continue to build up behind this. You're so focused on this pressure. Um, yeah. But you're trying yeah. to win the short game when you could easily win the long one. Exactly. And I always, I don't know if you guys do this. See, Fried, you're better than us. But um, I freaking always, like, I'll be, like, pretty much done with the pressure, and then I throw down every tech. I should be throwing them <laughs> during the pressure. So, yeah. I throw down every tech you could possibly have. I'm like, wow, I should have had this, like, two minutes ago. I could be pumping out mutas, let's say, and I throw down this fire when this fire should have been done. Yeah. Uh, uh, batteries, but they were out of energy for the most part. They did I feel job. like it's it's so easy when, like, you have units that are, like, near the enemy to just be so focused on those units rather than, like, at your home base. Well, it's, it's very hard to do to be like in the middle of a battle and to to move your camera back and we are going to get the GG. That was pretty, that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit <laughs> of awkward I, timing. Yeah. It's one of those moments like you run down your ramp because you think like the rush is over and it's like, psych. The, psych. And I, I like the point you're making because even I, I go back and I'm tr I try to macro during fights. I try to macro up, you know, hit those injects right before fights going. So I have the larva, but sometimes in that moment you get so tunnel focused uh, that you just find yourself more behind or than you should have been. Absolutely. All right, so that was yeah. a zero, uh, two zero in favor of Nicro. Um, I do have a lot of Nicro matches coming up. This one's actually the big one. Nicro got quail. Nicro got quail. Yeah. So. Um, Both good players. Oh. Okay. I actually don't know what happened in this, but. I actually really don't because all I cared about was my group and I was thrilled. <laughs> I was in like euphoria when I got out of my group um, because I didn't even think I was going to beat Ultralisk and beat Catalyst and put, take a game off Terradin. So I was just like, wow, that just happened. And I'm playing like shit right now. So, I mean, I got to fix that. Uh, but uh, I don't know what happened in this match. And this is, I mean, if I were to say, I would say Nyquil probably won. But mm -hmm. Gokwell probably put up a fight, a good fight. This is, all right, so one second. Um... So this is going to be a little bit of a dangerous cast. Um, I don't Why? Because we don't... I don't, I don't... I'm not saying anything yet. But it's, a, it's, all in, it's all in party chat. Oh, the three games aren't labeled? Oh, come so... on now. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that matter? Because now they know it's a best of... Now they know it's three games. Oh, shit. My bad. And we don't... We So we know it at least... Well, guys... Play. I gave away that you're going to see Amazing StarCraft. So. You're going to see Amazing StarCraft, but I don't know if we're going to show these out of order because I haven't labeled them Game 1, Game 2, and Game oh, 3. Oh, that doesn't matter. So we might no just see the know. victor and then just an extra game. So um, we're going to go <laughs> well, no, this. Well, no, but... What? Wait a second. But you won't see, like, even if we're playing the third match first, it doesn't... Like, you won't see the victor. If I play the first match and then the third match, we could theoretically see the victor. And the oh, match. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're gonna go right to this game and pretend that didn't happen. Um, well, just look at the. Can you look at the grass? What's that? Um, the grass will give it away. You gotta like go through the thing to see the grass, right? Oh, that's poopy. Yeah, only at the end. Once you've processed the entire replay, does it give it to you? All right, I have faith in you. I, I could probably have uploaded them to like GG Tracker if that was still up, but we're gonna hit watch. I'm gonna hit the watch button. Okay. And. Okay. Uh, we're gonna have fun. This first game is actually Acid Plant. This is a uh, you know ZVP. Uh, Got Quail and Nitro are the uh, the biggest threats in this group. So I expect good StarCraft. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the top left hand corner, the Red Zerg. Got Quail. I hand it to you, Siegfried. Okay. Down in the bottom right, we have Indy Teal. It is Nitro. And then Nitro. Can you give me some of those, like, GSL caster announcing? What, like, the, uh, the voices that they have? The, like, pre-recorded ones? Yeah, like, for a while there, they had, they had like, Tasteless and Artosis doing, like, these Archon. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, oh, no, I loved, I loved when Tasteless did uh, the introductions. It's Nigro! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have an early pool. I mean, oh, look at that. Hello, early pool. No gas, early pool. Yeah, uh, I really like this ooh, build. Uh, drone is going MVP. forward. Is this the three hatcheries before gas build? Three hatcheries before gas. Um, this oh, no, might be the. This might be the six zerglings before gas build. Is he? 
He's moving forward. Yeah, this is the one you get. You go 14 pool, you get six circlings, and you try to deny the uh, natural, right? I'm just hoping to see a a hatchery made up here in, like, the third. (laughs) Yeah, a a proxy hatch? (laughs) Proxy hatch. It looks like we're going to get a proxy hatch, actually. Um, As he hopes. uh, Oh! uh, You love it. I love it. And he's going to send links out. He's going to have two sources of... of, um, Larva one a lot closer here as the gas goes down. Uh, but none of this has been scouted. Are we going to get a proxy hatch and... No, he's just going to scout. There's no... No, he'll see it. He'll see that there's no freaking um, he sees his hatchery range. here. And he'll be like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, but he might not assume proxy hatch. Like, I would, Yeah, I would never assume proxy hatch. I'm going to assume a push and he's going to get the zealot in a good place. And If he sees the roach warren, he'll know it's proxy hatch. Okay. All right, walk me walk me through that logic. Help me understand so I can use this cheese. His gases weren't early enough to do a ravager rush, so the only uh, possible explanation is a proxy hatch. Because if it's just one base roaches, then you won't have enough roaches at the front. Yeah, but what if Necro might just be thinking like, "Wow, Doc Quill's master's noob lol, forgot no, to expand." No, Doc. Guy, he knows Doc <laughs> Quill's pretty good enough. Oh, he's screwing up here. Let me yeah. just. Yeah, take maybe it easy. maybe Necro's like really cocky. Like he just like. Thanks on everything that, like, can't see. It's just a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> he is hanging out over that natural, uh, waiting for an expansion. Uh, or at least not controlling his, his probe. This might just be a mistake. Like, hey, I got some minerals. I'm going to hang back. Um, <laughs> does look like he's going to look at the third, though. He's going to find this peroxy hatch. He's going to find this one morphing brooch. He's actually positioning himself around it uh, so he can snag it when it gets <laughs> out. Yeah, and uh, looks like it might just oh, get away. It might pay. He might pay for it as the lings move on through the hole. Oh, that's a uh, pretty crappy for Necro, actually. Uh, very, very smart by Godquail, actually, to think about doing that. Take Most players would be so concentrated on their own brooch that like they would forget about that. No, oh, you're absolutely right. He came back in the perfect time. He saw the units were away from the base. I mean, he's gonna lose his proxy hatch, but he had planned on that anyway. Uh, behind this, more roaches, another queen. Uh, just trying to get a couple drone kills here. To make for the fact that he hasn't been making his own. Yeah. Um, I guess it's kind of nice because it confirms a couple things. Like Necro doesn't have his natural. Um, Hi, Queen. So Necro's. Uh, it also confirms that it confirms that um, Necro is ahead. By yeah. A good amount. It does. It's if he loses a lot of these uh, units here, though, that's going to be pretty bad for Necro. Um, Although he is just trading roaches for this, which isn't the best. Oh, almost saves that uh, roach. He's going to push here. He, he's, I think this is less ditch at this point. He's got to do some real damage. He's got to find some really good corrosive vials. Um, or this is... Over. It, essentially, I don't want to call it this quickly. Because he's still got this good pressure. He can still make units uh, relatively good pace. But he has 14 workers to 21. Uh, the army You're is... Right. Strong. Nigro could always doze off. I mean, this is still Nigro. This is still, you know... Still Nigro. Not count him out. This gateway could go down right here. Uh, I don't know why he didn't do the corrosive vials on the gateway. I mean, he can't see yeah. what you see, maybe. Maybe he doesn't see the... Stalkers. Yeah, so now the shield batteries are actually out of energy. So it's just Stalkers versus Ravagers now. Um... There we go. A little more on the gateway there. Uh, just a little bit of dance. This is a dance. You can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. <laughs> uh, okay, at the end of this, though, I feel like Nitro is going to take a small advantage. Maybe? Wow. I don't know. If, uh... Taking it that gateway is actually pretty big. Oh, uh, it's huge. I would love to see drones at this place. That'd be fun. <laughs> just pull all his drones. He's got a couple roaches coming across. He's still able to make it from this. This proxy hatch is, is paying for itself here, at least. And the damage he's outputting. Uh, this poor little probe here, still back and forth on his opponent's natural. Um, three hits there for the stalkers. Good micro control. A little bit of misplay there by Quail. A little Ooh. move command. Uh. This is a decent amount of stalkers in it, though. Like, I feel like the longer this goes on, the better it is for Necro. He's mining significantly more. Agreed. And uh, even if he keeps taking bad fights, like, I, I think it's fine. Uh, I think this is last ditch. Okay. Uh, GG. 
you could leave your friends behind. It was a good idea. Um, I don't think it was executed as well as it could have been. Yep, I agree. Alright, looks next game is on Black Pink, which as I understand is a K-pop group. Yeah. K-pop Blackpink. I wish I was a band that was I wish I was so famous that Blizzard named products after me. Leroy Jenkins got his own, you know, World of Warcraft card. His own achievement title. He got his own what, sorry? Uh he got his own achievement. Oh. Um it was a um you did some things and you got an achievement and a title, such and such Jenkins. But uh, oh, I'll cool. leave this one to you two. Oh. All right. Uh, I guess I'll start us off. So down in the bottom left, we have in a red. It is Got Quill. And in the top right, we have the Teal Protoss. It is all in Nitro. I was thinking about doing the Tasteless. You just kind of saw me go up for a second. I'm like, uh, no. Uh, what would that sound like? <laughs> can, you, can you do it again? I'm going to know the Tasteless. I can try it again. I don't know if my, I, my speaker might fucking explode, so hopefully it doesn't. Um, in the top right. I can't, I can't even, like, I got a vibrato in my voice. In the top right, we have the Teal Protoss. It is all in Nitro. I can't even do it. Oh, <laughs> man. I just, I want to do voices now. I just be like, in the top right hand corner, represent you, you all know, in, it's Nitro. Yeah. Sorry, so you, 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 know, you know, he freaking, I, I can't even, you know what I'm talking about when he does it at IEM. I do. It is all in Nitro. But the yeah, it's like he's like running a car engine with his voice. Yeah. Nitro. <laughs> Nitro. I mean, they are they are the premier casters, right? There's there's no yep. two that are greater. In fact, nope. with me, and I'll show I'll show everybody uh, later. I have their signatures. Oh really? What did you get tomorrow? Uh, to be fair, I like Day Nine better. Um, oh really? Uh, when see. he did it. When he did it. You like yeah, this casting I'm, better? Yeah, I love this casting. Yeah. I think he was a great. Uh, his his uh, he was very good at like in fights and like explaining everything that's going on and hyping up like when there's a big fight, going through what's going on during the big fight and hyping everyone up. I think he was very good at that. I he was one of the the greatest assets to StarCraft, and I was really sad when he stopped. Yeah, I'm not surprised that he did, but yeah. I, mean, I don't know what he's doing. Is he still just doing day nine dailies with other stuff? Um, he was doing some regular StarCraft stuff. He was doing Hearthstone's play. Um, yeah. I mean, he talks BlizzCon all the time. Um, he's, at, he's at BlizzCon all the time. He didn't do StarCraft this year at BlizzCon. I think he did it the year before. Um, he was paid to do some more StarCraft promotional stuff about the time Free to Play came out. So we saw a little bit of additional like StarCraft is awesome videos. Um, he was making his own game for a while. Um, oh yeah, that one RTS. Right, that fell oh. apart, and he he left, and it wasn't actually very yeah. fun. I got I got into the alpha, but you go uh -huh. into the, you go into the alpha, right? And this is chat room, and this video like welcome to the alpha, and it's day nine. That's huh. cool. And then you like hang out, in chat, uh, we got... hang out in chat. Oh yeah. We're gonna have some. Oh, we're gonna have some roach pressure. We're gonna have some depths, and I can tell you one thing: roaches do really well into depths, so it should be interesting. <laughs> How heavy is he committed to a depth? So can he make the switch to stalkers? I mean, it doesn't seem that bad. We are we are gonna get a stargate. Um, I mean, yeah, it's yeah, pretty well, unfortunate though because it's right at the front. Uh, Ooh, he's gonna a need a couple more shield batteries if he wants to do anything. Links behind, a lot of roaches. Uh, maybe some ravagers being morphed in. Uh, with that gas he's got. Yeah, Nitro knows. He's already putting two. Yeah. Let's see. What is what does Nitro know? Nitro uh, has seen no Roach Warren. Uh, yeah, he yeah, did see I'm, the lack of drones. And he saw the lack of a third. Sure. This was always one the of the most frustrating of the things to deal with the Terran. There's what Roaches? Roach Ravenger early on about this timing before four minutes. Oh, yeah. You don't have a lot going for you yet. Boy, the right. files are disgusting. Ooh, I do like the Void Ray. Yeah, he has to. Smart. Uh, shield battery here. A couple of them. He could have taken down this gateway. You think? I think uh... he should have went right for the gateway. Because he was already at half, pretty much. If he went for the right for the gateway, I think he would have gone it. I think the shield battery is a bad answer. A bad, bad target. He's going to get through. Um, yeah, not, uh, Vordray is it though, so this is on a bit of a timer. Uh, can he kill Necro well, in time? I don't think it's on the timer because he's just gonna keep streaming units across. I mean, all road. I mean, all the tech is right here. I, you take out a couple crystals. 
and that's game. Pick up a couple probes, then it's game. There are so many options for for, for death stroke, I guess. Yeah, there's some adepts up here. They're gonna get it. The probes are gonna what, start to fall one after. What did you call him? I said adepts. Oh, I thought you said death stroke. I'm like, huh? That, that'd be cool, and maybe I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of what I heard. Lings, uh, lings, lings do well against Void Rays. You just need Lings, and it looks like he's making more Lings, and they're going to continue to flood across. You were talking yeah. about the Ling flood that got Scarlet through I, I am. This is it. Yeah, th this is like, this looks exactly like one of the SOS versus Scarlet games. I don't care how many Void Rays you make, you can't outpace my Lings, even if I have yeah. to run across the map to do it. Um, and you're not going to make any more Void Rays, because there went your Crystal. And that's it. Your Pylon. Uh, I don't even, you don't need to, this is it. Like, there's nothing he can do. You think we're gonna have a GG here? Yeah, I think we're gonna have a GG here very uh, shortly. Yeah. Last game was won by Nigro. Yes. Yeah. So, can we just talk about how great it is that we managed to play the games in a correct order? Uh, I'll correct yeah, order. I mean, Siegfried, you're the <laughs> Masters player, am I wrong? Uh, technically. Oh, technically, I mean, all the Masters? Like... Oh, you, you, well, yeah. One of my accounts is a Masters, but like the rest of them are all in Diamond. Oh, like, I thought you were. I thought you were a clear Masters player. No. Is it like uh. it's the, like the Southeast Asia server or something? No, it's on NA, but it's just only one of my accounts. It's just oh, barely in Masters. Barely in oh, Masters. Smart masters. No one's He's like you're barely an Olympic champion. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's only 18 to 14 workers, to be fair, but, I mean, this is still all on power. He hasn't been making units. He's making drones pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, it's just, as long as Gokrell doesn't screw up massively, he should yeah. be pretty quickly. I mean, he's I mean, making an evolution chamber. Those sentries are a little dangerous. They can force the force field, but, I mean, these void rays aren't that scary, especially since he's only got two of them. He needs a couple units, maybe some banes to, to break a wall more a little faster. Um... Checking if there's a third. But, you know, I actually, I've marked, I already marked Got Quail as uh, winning this. Let me go and unmark that. Yeah. Well, what happened? We just completely killed this game too early. <laughs> um, I don't think so. We're going to find out. Watch it. These force fields, they're going to be to death. Yeah, it's going to be everything. It's gonna be like a delayed soul train with void rays. It's gonna be gonna be awful. I mean, do you have void rays? I would have liked Lair though. Lair would be good. Like he should have had Lair. He is right super now. committing to this all in. There, there's no more drones in production, right? No. Okay, there were a couple. I, I misspoke. There's two bases worth of drones and a third one. They're they're starting. Uh, he's got plus one going. Seven more drones. Um, so maybe he's backing out and committing to a long game. Hope he's gonna get a couple uh, overlords though in the process. Yo, look at the kills on those void rays. 23, 17. They're lings, they don't count. <laughs>
It's like, oh shit, lurkers are really strong. How do I deal with these? Oh, uh, build a bunch of immortals. Oh wait, lings are really strong. What do I make? Immortals. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm always... not even kidding though, because immortals are really useful against lings because they're fat as shit and they're fucking um. In a, in they, like a ball, they 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 kill. And they stop banelings. If you go back, a hundred banelings have to hit them to kill them, and it's ridiculous. I hate immortals as a unit. I hate it. And what should do no damage to ones? That's they're, the solution. They're almost, <laughs> I mean, they're almost my my direct counter. I'm a very roach-heavy player, and I see more than two immortals. I might as well GG. You're a roach-heavy player? That's why you're in the 3700s. Roaches suck right now. I, you know, I have not, you got, you can't, you can't account for my, um, my Zerg MMR. I have not played heavy Zerg in over a year and a half. Uh, so all, all that yeah. was in the height of my roach. I, well, you know. It's I a, just, I mean, I love roaches, don't get me wrong, but they suck. Alright, here's the end. These hydras will stomp this army. Yeah. I don't even know if I call it an army. Well, that's a, a forward deployed force, maybe. Um, yeah. Kind of units of poking. Now, my, my uh, heyday, uh, and even now, it's not about strategy, it's not about units, it's about macro and having having more on the board than my opponent. Um, yep. I, I mean, I, I love, I love the more of it. I mean, to be fair, I love going muters, and they kind of suck right now, too. Yeah, sure. Muters have yeah. sucked, like, in all of the state of Void, I feel. Well, yeah. They've yeah. never been a unit that could have any meat. They were never, like, part of your main mm -hmm. army. They were just supplementary. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, like, I felt like in Heart of Swarm, they definitely had, like, periods of time where it was, like, Protoss had to open Stargate because of the threat of muters. Yeah, no, you go Ling Ling. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. Yeah. Oh, great um, thing that they did. Tag. Tagging the Oracle tagged him. That's, that's what uh, I hear. It doesn't him. matter though. I can see him. It's it's still gonna be yeah. GG. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Lurkers? They can see him. They're still dangerous. Yeah, lurkers are such a weird unit though. Like I feel like they they look a lot scarier than they are. They are. Because well, on DVD, they are. There it is. I told you. I'm yeah. just that much of a beast. And uh, that was still like that was pretty impressive for Necro to like hold out as long as he did versus yeah. what we, we assumed was like a lost game. Like he did end up losing eventually, but he stayed in there for a good while. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, it was right oh. from the stay, and he pushed back. It forced he forced his opponent to macro up. There are plenty of things he could have, you know, doubled down on. We're saying Necro is the better player. He he could have definitely mm -hmm. pulled forward and well. <laughs> Yeah. I just have this like image in my head now of like Necro being like a super like cocky guy where he's just like, heh, you're lucky to win that game. <laughs> like, <something. laughs> I've pushed back your cheese. I will now macro up and defeat you with a larger <laughs> army. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, like I've I've uh, really, like heard Necro talk a couple times, so I don't really know him all that well. But we'll just make him into like the esports villain for a tournament. <laughs> I want to. I, I I do. I do like that idea of um, speed racer villain. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Your void rares are nothing against my ha. -ha. <laughs> All right. Um, That's great. Oh, uh, Weeb Chat has updates. I want to go look. I want to go <laughs> look. Um, all right. So this last huh. match um, is on East Watch. East Watch looks to be a map with minerals, gas. Oh wow. This wait, and they have, wait, they have minerals? They have minerals. Um, what do we know about this map, and what do these two players need to do? It's annoyingly annoying. And what do these two players need to do? Yeah. I think What's the strategy? Gokwell has to cheese, and Nyko has to screw up. You think it's that di that that divided? You think there's that much of a gap that Gokwell needs to cheese to take it's this? Why got, yes, it's why Gokwell is cheesing this much. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Nyko, uh, if I... I think Nyko, uh, if I were to... He's probably the third or fourth best player in the clan. Okay. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Would you agree, Sigfried? Yeah. Uh, I think I mean, I, like... I, I'd put Riser. I'd put Logan. One, two. Then I'd put, like, and them two are better than, like, everyone else. Wagon's always the wild card because Wagon could beat anyone in the freaking clan. And and also lose to half the people in the clan, but he he can beat anyone. Um, I think the only one he's gonna have a trouble beating is Logan because he doesn't know how he plays. Um, then you got Nitro Wagon, and I put Wagon as well, but Nitro Wagon Drumhead 
like all in the same class and manipulation, like all in that same third, fourth, fifth, sixth class. I kind of put like we got like like Riser and Logan and World is Doom. Grip and Necro, I would say like Oh second. Grip too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grip. Grip is third, yeah, Grip. Well They're all the top thing, yeah. We should introduce them. They don't need any introduction. I, I don't know why we have to. <laughs> it just feels wrong if we don't. In yeah. the top in the I was about to say top left. In the bottom left we have the teal Protoss. It is tied one to one. It is all in Nicro. And uh in the top right we have in the red. Plain Zerg. It is God Quill. Who's going standard? I, I am oh, seeing oh. standard on both ends now. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, standard. We're getting a wall. We're getting a cybernetics core. This probe is uh, going to poke in and, and see what's going on. Standard. Standard. Oh, I mean, uh, the six lanes going standard, but sure. Four lanes, yeah. right? You were saying that the other day. Yeah, and you don't even need four lanes against Protoss because the um, uh, you don't need the first units to be. Lings because the adept can't get uh, the adept won't get to you until like 45 seconds later than the links come out. I just found out. Oh, he's trying to hide these and try to make sure the pub doesn't see them. Ah, did the pub see them? They didn't see him. Did they see him? Ah, did... yeah. He's... But this has been this is something we've seen a lot though. Six links has seen. Not, I wouldn't say the standard, but in these matches we've seen it a lot. He's making ten. Oh, he's going behind this. Is he making a bailing mess? He's got no, it's just a lane flood. Nope. He's not making any drones. This is just lane flood. He's gonna force a, you know, a, a more. He's gonna force a bigger wall at a minimum. I don't. Battery coming down. You, what you need with this, you need an evolution chamber and you need drones. That's what you need, especially on this map too. This like map's really like, good for you. You want to drop him down with the dropper. You want to drop. You want to hit the front and drop like the rest of them in the main. Okay. I, I guess you split up the units. Okay. He can do a little micro here. He can he can avoid himself losing some lings. Oh, uh, but he's not gonna kill his Zella quick enough. He's not gonna kill his Zella quick enough. There's yeah, that's a lot of them. There's there a shield is. battery. Yeah. And behind it, another pylon just in case. So this wall is pretty <laughs> secure. I would like to see him come back and, and build drones. Uh, I think mm. additional lings without any more bane lings or dropping is kind of a, a waste. Yeah, yeah. Now he's he now just lost eleven of them to that Zella and that adept. So it's pretty significant. Like. That's like five drones, pretty yeah, much. 14 now. 15. Uh, Can I call it? Um, I mean... Yes. <laughs> G. <laughs> G. I'm amazing! Three minutes and 33 seconds of that game. So I know how to lose very well, so I knew it. So Nicro, <laughs> Nicro um, hasn't dropped a set yet. Um, we're scheduled to do Nicro versus Frogs. Um... Why not? Yeah, Nicro versus Frogs. Let's, let's do that one. Um, where you at? Are we we see all the same here. Uh, what cheese? I mean, is it, we we need to see Frogs cheese, right? Well, Frogs doesn't always cheese. Oh, is it ZBZ? Yeah, he cheese. No, I know exactly well, what he does. ZBZ. It's, it's ZBZ. I played eight. Oh wait, he's playing Quotos. He's playing night. He's playing against Nicro. Oh, he's playing against Nitro ZBZ. Yeah, uh, I don't know what he does ZVP. I know what he does ZVZ because I played 18 games in a row on the same fucking day against him. Mm, how, like, that was like terrible. Ladder? You just kept hitting him on ladder? No, I just played 18 practice games in a row without a break. I almost died. <laughs> Need some water. I played him, I played Zoe three times, and I played Boo four. You have to hydrate. Same same. You gotta hydrate. Yeah, and then piss my brains out. Alright, this next one is Catalyst LE. Um... This is the first game of the series between Frogs and Nicro. Spawning in the top left-hand corner in the pink, it is Frogs. And in the bottom right, we have the Teal Protoss, who has not lost the series yet. It is all-ins Nicro. Yep. Only one game taken off of them in the second game of the last series. I uh, got Quail. Uh, just some good pressure, early pressure with uh, Roach Ravager. We are um, yeah, uh, Frogs is not as good as Got Quail, but if I were to pick like someone to beat Nicro in a series, I'd pick Frogs, which I know is kind of an oxymoron, but Frogs is known of beating Riser, probably the best guy in our clan. Um, he's a wild card, you're saying. He can pull it yeah, off. Yeah, he's a total wild card. Uh, I would not be surprised if he takes a game off Nicro. 
Oh, he's not, not going to get that. He is, there's this dance going on. This this absolutely frustrating dance with... Oh, uh, he's actually going to get it now. He's got enough room. He's got it. Jukes! Jukes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, did that take uh, did that take micro or did the probe just need to be on auto attack to the to the drone? No, that took micro. That took micro. You can micro out the auto auto follow auto attack. Yeah, uh, but also um, I'm sure Nitro was he wasn't only doing that probe. He was he went back probably to his base for a second. Sure, sure, sure. I just assumed that by clicking the attack button and clicking on the drone, he will never leave his side or be juked. No, you can um, you can make him hit you, and then you if you move at the right time, you'll get enough room. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough. Well, then that was a fantastic job. And Zerg, but that's not what happens. Yeah. I mean, Zerg have this cap. Yeah, it's not. He gave him a little more room. Zerg have this capability of making that third base, not worrying about the natural. He's just got a. It, it's not not the end of the world for him. On the other side, Protoss does not have the capability, right? So they they need this wall. They need this protection from things that Zerg can throw throw at them. So I'd say quick thinking. Yeah, no, I feel you. Is he um, gonna take this fourth? He's like, screw you, pro. <laughs> go take it the fourth. <laughs> okay, he's gonna gather a crystal and come back. Gather a mineral. Now the wings are out. They can take care of this probe. This won't be a problem. Pylon yeah, block. Though. Can I get a pylon block? All right, so we just have them um, gathering minerals at the far side. That's what's happening. They are yeah. long distance mining. Now I, I, I mean. Figured up to 24 right there's still minerals that can be gathered if you're saturated these these drones on the on the main base would have been better served right yeah like it is technically inefficient like after you know 16 but yeah they will would still gather sure. i think frog just wanted to buy the third so it was kind of that fire and forget mentality not not the best and most efficient way to do it but he didn't have to worry about it he could focus on other things um this adept is gonna get away He's got one kill. The kill is a drone, so that is the kill that matters. Hey, Zerg li Zergling lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's going to warp in here, uh, find himself a good place here to shoot at drones. Uh, he's going to micro it a bit, try to get away from this queen, but he's only going to get one more kill. Oh, hey, thanks, Class Rock. Thanks for the cheer. That's me. Oh, thanks, Ribeye. You missed the cheer yeah. battle. <laughs> there was an intense that cheer battle the other day. Oh, that's funny. It was, uh... That's fun, dude. Shazam came in, he took the top score, and then, uh... Like, a Scorpion Tanker took that from him by one, so it went, like, 10 to 11, to 20 to 21, to 30 to 31, to 100 to 200, to 201 to 300, to 301, to the 1020 you see now. Holy shit. Yeah, that was, that was a fun little evening. Um, yeah, well, Shazam has 1395 now. And Scorpion is 502. Oh, total, yeah, but they, they, they got that top cheer banner at the top of the chat, right? Oh, yeah. The top single cheer. I do regret this, Shazam. Just lost. It's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, is that what he says? Is that what the top cheer is? Yeah, I, I do. I didn't know I could look at that. Yeah, I haven't paid for it. I've never paid for it. I always get um, the advertisement. The end. Yeah, I do the ads all the time. And there was one day that it just didn't stop, so I just did like 25 ads. And the, actually yesterday, I got 100 cheers from one ad, and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, wow. I, I haven't been able to find the ads. Every time I go, it's like, pay money. I'm like, I want ads. Why am I not allowed to watch ads? Oh, yeah. Sometimes they block, they block me for two weeks because they thought I was, they were, I was a bot. Oh, man. That's pretty funny. Um, Bailey Ness at the third. That's yep. cool. Nice place to do you it. I like it there because it's delays. defensible and it's hidden. Well, this is going to be a three base. This is the normal three base uh, timing of Adepts by Nitro. We are, we are, we are seeing the Adepts attack speed. I hate it. 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 Make a str uh, strong unit stronger. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, if he, can, if he pulls out the roaches, um, that won't be a problem. If he makes that is exactly switch. what he means. He means a dick measuring contest. <laughs> what? That's what someone in the chat said. They were oh. saying, talking about the cheer, cheer contest was called a dick measuring contest uh, a few times. When I make Siegfried chuckle, it makes me horny. Um, anyway. <laughs> we are a mature stream, but I am going to put this on YouTube. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was the it, there should be There should be something in the chat that says, ribeye will make this worse. Yeah, ribeye already is. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, no. Um, we have a lot of units coming out of uh, the, the, the uh, yeah, frogs. Yeah. Goodbye. Rebind, Siegfried did what? Storytime video. Wait, what? Who said that? <laughs> Top 10 things said by Siegfried and Ribeye. <laughs> Make it clickbaity as hell. Um, we have a lot. We do have a lot of links. Um, Roach, no, Hydra Speed, right? I might, wait a minute. Let me look around this base real quick. Yeah, yeah Hydra yep. Speed. Make sure I'm looking at the you right thing. You don't have thing. the production tab open? I do, I do. It's the icons. I'm making sure I'm not wrong. I'm not making ah. a mistake between uh, well, Roach Speed and Hydra Speed. Um, well, it would be uncommon for you to be wrong. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, they're all like... <laughs> they're, all, they're all spiky, purplishy things, right? So, like... Yeah. Uh, like, I'm pretty sure that's Hydralis, but it might be the other purplish, spiky upgrade. Yeah. Um, that's that a lot, a of, lot of links. Oh, but, but that is more... more depths. Yeah, that is more depths than can... Than can be handled by such a that's man. the veins though the veins if he, if he doesn't get up there uh this hesitation as he tries to call in more forces is going to allow these banes the time they need and this is a, a good cluster group he's going to see them oh he's going to split like a tower oh, and then he's going to move over oh he does he cancels the the warp and he's there's it. the gg all right well nine 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 nine, I, nine nine that felt like such an awkward gg no he was done <laughs> Oh man. He was done. Once they fight. split, you lose. You gotta fight strong. No. Uh Turd Zirkler is now playing StarCraft 2. That's such a great Turd name. Zirkler. Yeah, I think yes. he's um Proxy Tempest. Mm. I think that's his baby. Um I it's... thought though that was the Nidus guy, wasn't it? Oh Nidus guy, you're right. You're right. It's just such a great name. Yeah. Um all right, so this next map is Black Pink, which we have seen a lot of people love this map. It uh, just because it feels standard. Nothing. Where's our short distance cheese maps that nobody loves? Oh, I those not... those are just been introduced no. again. Oh, not it. A biogenesis. All right, I gotta go play some bio. I love those short distance maps. No, it's not like that short distance, but it's like for map maps recently. It's definitely a lot shorter than what we're probably used to. Fair enough. Well, you guys go at it. Take okay. All right. Uh, starting us off, we have down in the bottom left in the pink, it is Frogs. Spawning in the top right-hand corner, representing all in, hoping to close this game out. 2-0. It is Nicro. I just want to say something. Grip Ash has 22 follow uh, streamer, uh, people watching him. Who's Most that? Ever seen him at. Wait, say what? Grip. All, all, all inspiration Grip. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's streaming with 22 people. Yeah, yeah. 22 people. Oh, damn. He gets a decent amount of viewers. Yeah, I didn't I didn't ever thought he got 21 or 22, but yeah, very nice. Anyway, yeah. back to the game. More no, fun. no, please, no, that, that's that's a cool conversation. Uh, that. All yeah, in, all in grips doing good things. Yeah, it's good things. I know who to host when I'm out of here. Yep. Your grip normally is a pretty fun stream, actually. Hey, what? Grip, he has a pretty fun stream. Oh? Yeah. What makes it fun? His, his play style uh, is ridiculous, so it's fun to watch. Yeah. And uh, he he's normally just, like, talks about, like, random uh, philosophy stuff, because he's, like, a philosophy major. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's just interesting to hear him talk. That's he nice. also does the, what was it, the poopy butthole um, uh, build, which is fabulous. What's what the poopy butthole build? <laughs> yeah, the poopy butthole is the warm hoe to worm. <laughs> That he that he literally is unbelievable at it too. Wait, wait, wait! What was the first part of that? Swarm host. Um, oh God! Night swarm. How many bases? Uh, I think it's two or three. Okay. And he literally just spawns it outside, and he knows the perfect amount of swarm hosts you need to kill the hatch. Then he nightuses in his main, puts them in the night swarm, goes into his main, does the same thing again, and kills all the bases. Oh, that's gross! Hilarious and annoying. So gross. I don't. I that's something I need to spend some time on. Oh, look at you, pro. You you made a, an assimilator and then you stood there and waited for it to finish. And look at you, other probe joining it. And and you, probe, go get some minerals, probes. All right. So um, that's something I need to work on myself is those high tier, you know, third tier Zerg units. Get out some brood lords and play with them. Um, get out some of those swarm hosts. I always find it so difficult on Plan Zerg to like make like the higher tech units. It's just like I want to spam like shit tons of units. I don't want to build a couple. 
I just want to slam down my key and max out. I can either hold the key and have a hundred lings, or I can have five brood lords. Okay, wait a second. I want to be able to have an army that's unbeatable, and I don't believe Zerg has it. Really? Play Protoss. Protoss definitely has it. What oh, is go it play Protoss Wings of Liberty, Liberty Zerg. Yeah, Wings, Wings of Liberty Protoss, too, in the beginning of Wings of Liberty. The, the Death Ball. Oh my yeah. god, I hated yeah. that army. But that wasn't because of like how the game was, that was just the meta. The game, the game became that uh, Zerg was unbeatable. So what is what is the what is the protest army now that is unbeatable? Like if they get there, um, um, carriers, carrier carriers, and any units below. Got it. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It's carriers, immortals, uh, two colossus, uh, speed zealots, archons, and they just keep popping out zealots and and archons yep. as the. Uh, mm -hmm. The carriers never die. Yep, you put one DT at another base while you're attacking, so the DT kills a bit. Well, it's just stupid. Yeah, it's pretty hard to get there, obviously, but like in this mm -hmm. situation where it doesn't happen, uh, I'm not sure what the like correct response is now too, because I've seen we've seen a decent. You need, games, like, I think you need vibrant. Any of those yeah. builds where the answer is don't let the opponent get there is a dumb answer. Like Ultralisks, uh, a few patches ago, when you know they had all that extra armor and Marines three three Marines did one point of damage to them. Yeah, and Great people would just there. like. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of wasted energy for not a whole lot. Yeah, lot of, yeah. You're form. right. This is uh, what three kills, two kills. Uh, did waste some minerals there. Uh, remaking uh, the spore crawler, he gets now a spore crawler at each base. Uh... I love how this phoenix just pays for itself no matter what. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Like Zerg's going to send overlords out. You're gonna get them for free. Like literally, that shouldn't be a thing. Like, not saying it's OP. It's just like oh, anything oh, that, oh, like, any that. race, any race at all, that has the question, oh, it's paying for itself, and that's the answer. Like any race, no matter what it is, like no, no. Well, I mean, let's be fair. It pays for itself, but in large numbers, it's very specific. Has very specific uses. It can be countered pretty easily. But you know, one of them. You shouldn't. You shouldn't make it in large. You, I mean, I understand people do. Some people have a bill for it, but this. I'm not saying. It's just you build one phoenix. It will. 100% pay for itself. Sure, sure. I thought uh, I thought it was uh, the Protosses that were supposed to be complaining about Zerg, not the other way around. I always complain about Protosses. <laughs> I, don't, I also don't Wing Flood. I'm trying to practice, like, I mean, when I got to my highest amount, I was really, I'm a really good cheeser. Like, I'm actually very good at it. But, and when I say very good at it, be nice. I'm not, like, insane, like, Masters level. But I'm very good at cheesing. So I'm trying to, like, learn how to actually play the game in macro and whatever. So I'm not Wing Flooding. So, like, I'm facing these ridiculously huge, massive armies. Well, what would you right, right, take a look around here. We have um, another robotic facility going down. Uh, more, f uh, another forge working on uh, depth speed. Uh, nothing. I mean, we got a third base going up. I'm not seeing a lot of a fancy play here from Nicro. Looks like he's taking a nice slow macro build. Uh, poking over here with the Oracle, um, kind of getting his. Uh, with the phoenix around, right, taking out the the overlords. Um, but on the other end, take a look, look, quick look at the unit tabs. We also aren't seeing a lot from uh, a lot from frogs. Although he's building up an army over here and positioning it just south of the third base. Adepts are the answer to everything that that frogs is throwing out here. Uh, yeah, uh, kind of a mistake I feel like for frogs are not a bandage with this force. Um, even though like. Uh, the addition of Baleans doesn't like automatically kill all the adepts, but it at least forces Nicro to micro a lot more, which uh, kind of lets you take the fight a bit easier, if that makes sense. Sure, I mean, you get to choose whether they're on the sentry force fields or the adepts first, or yeah. the adepts. Um, he's going to come back here, get shield battery, get a shield battery, pick me up. Frogs loves this build. I, I've never seen anyone do it, but he like made, like I don't know if he made this build or whatever, but he loves this double freaking Hydralis 10 build. Were you working on double upgrades down there? Yeah, just get double upgrades really quickly and just have oh, them yeah. attack earlier. Make one yeah, this is kind of interesting. Up. He's gonna uh, break through this. This thing. is enough. He's got enough to break through this. Yeah, maybe I misspoke when this was the right answer. If you yeah. just have this much damage on the field. Yeah, uh... Frogs really needs to target down that Archon, I feel. Uh, he doesn't really have all of his units kind of fighting at the same time, which yeah, I think is a bit of a mistake. Uh, Archon is dead, but that's still a lot of adepts and sentries left. Wait for the Lings. The Lings have to get here. 
Oh, it is target, pretty, actually. pretty not strong when they get hit by stuff. Yes, but if they don't get hit by <laughs> stuff, they're very strong. I mean, they are yeah. the, the squishy cannon. They are the fleshy cannons. Yeah. yeah. Um, Trunks wins this game. If, as he He's keeps really his far ahead. If he kills that, oh my god, if he kills that pile before the units. Oh! oh. So goes to. Wait, so what happens? Do you lose that warpin? Uh, you lose uh, the money, right? Or, uh, I didn't see any minerals return. They, they on all of the units, they like baneling nest, etc. They give you that cancellation money. But does the warpin like? Is that a warpin that just can't like that? Oh, no, like does it reset? Down? Does it reset? I don't know. All I, I know is I told you he was gonna take one game off, and I told you. <laughs> and I mean, this wasn't anything cheesy. This was a uh, solid timing attack here. Still though, uh, look at all those adepts. Uh, I don't. There's an immortal. It's, it's, I uh, don't care. Well, okay, this is a mistake I think by coming out of out of the base, leaving the base right now was. Oh, he didn't go through with it. That was a mistake. It should have canceled. Why nitro? Should have you should have went through it. Uh, yeah, I think Frogs is kind of uh, throwing at this point though. That's a lot of yes. adepts, and he can't fight. He should just kill these hydras. He should just. Stop with the hydras. Let the hydras oh. do their damage and then come back. Ooh. And he's got he's got two bases on top of his opponent. He's just got to defend now. He's got to put down some lurkers. Uh, he has no observer, right? He, he's making one right now. No, okay, yeah. no, but he he doesn't. He didn't have one now. Okay, that lurker then is coming down just now, but it'll still be a while before we can get lurkers on the field. I need um, sugar. I'm fucking tired. <laughs> I'm about to make some coffee after this match. After um, oh my god, after this match, I'm gonna make some coffee. I went to sleep at like 12.45 yesterday and freaking woke up at- I had to wake up for work at 5.30. I'm, I'm crying right now. Oh, man. I need sugar. Give me work. Sorry, I said for me you were saying something. Uh, I can't remember. See what happens when you let me in the cast? <laughs> we have a great time. It takes yes. all the pressure off. Yesterday, oh, oh, yeah, no, if that's you weren't paying happened. attention yesterday, I was up just a mile a minute. I Solo casting is, is something. Oh, yeah, solo casting is something. Because, uh, uh, to be honest, I feed off people better than I'm just like solo. Of course. Yeah. You know who does a great, great job casting, in my opinion, um, Josh Jordan, who I actually met at Cheese Adelphia. Nice guy. All right. Well, I don't he streams a bunch too. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good streamer. I like him a lot. And he's not like big yet, but he's yeah, yeah. he gets a decent amount of viewers, and he streams a bunch of events. Oh, there's the observer. Hello, observer. Um. Really, actually, surprise! Here we go. There's the overseers coming to join the army. That observer yeah. won't last long. Uh, you really can't be playing lurkers if you're not playing with overseers. Yeah, I was... want. Okay, so this is what a lot of zergs. This is what a lot of zergs do, including myself. Okay. Every okay. freaking game against protest that every zerg should not be doing. You should be making banelings. They're not. He's not making banelings. If he makes banelings, he bang, bang. wins these fights a hundred percent of the time. I'm with you. I agree. 100% of the time. Now he's just hoping he lurker for connections. Now he's hoping uh, you know, observers are out of place. These lurkers yeah. get good, good hits. Oh, lurkers way out of position here as Nicro continues to push forward. Uh, I think, I think he would have won that fight. I really think Frogs would have won that fight. But whatever. He's got to commit to it. He's got to get these lurkers in position. I think he was just he was caught off guard. I don't even think do. he needs his lurkers in position. I mean, don't get me wrong. It would be fabulous if he did. But sure, sure. Just go. Uh, I'm, I'm not happy with where they're at. There you go. One at if a time. He, yeah, it's kind of. Oh, he only got one forward. of them. Oh my God! That if he kills that um, Oracle, the game's over. Oh. Um, <laughs> the Oracles. There's two Oracles. They are far back. He's, he's I would like not skate in if I were you. You skated in right to the lurkers. Bye bye. Yeah. I think he might have just thrown that. I know he knew he was dead. He just. <laughs> he's got to place these lurkers. There's the GG. Yeah, Fergus continues his legacy of killing Grandmaster yeah. players. Yeah. So what we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna take. Uh, we got one more game in the series. We're gonna take a short break. Everybody agree with yeah. that? All right. Yeah. I want to do that. And yeah, no, like just talking about that. He did beat Riser in a series, if I'm not mistaken. Um. Like, if I'm not mistaken, in the last All Invitational, which I'm gonna look up right now, he beat Riser, which makes no sense. Innovation's playing Snoot today? Or later in eight hours? And Puff's playing Innovation? Jesus Christ. I gotta wake up for that. Um I'm I'm looking at the wrong thing. Where is all invitational Riggy? <sighs> Go here. Extraordinary. No, 
far as those two. Wait, which one was this? What? I'm trying to find the one. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Where is it? As far as in this one? Oh my god, two L Invitationals ago, it was the Wagon, Manipulation, Tech 4, and Atheros in a group. That's great. What was the... I swear he beat him. In something. Two of Frogs and... Ultralisk. Lost to Wagon 3-0. Which one was it? I swear he did something that was extremely impressive. Lost a riser here. Why is the wagon always in the most difficult group and gets out? Wagon, last time. Got quail, manipulation, and world is doom. Wagon thrives in adversity. Yeah, I think so. Um, hmm. Can't find it. Yeah, I can't find it. I don't think I'm looking at the last possible one. Wow, grip lost in this one. Pretty poorly. I think he just got a lot better. Hmm. Very oh, interesting. Oh, just Jordan's online. Is he streaming? No. He's not a bad player either. He's diamond two. Almost diamond one. Not bad. I think the only time I ever, like, like really heard about Jordan was, like, he got really pissed when, I think it was Leon, manor mule someone in the tournament he was casting. Hmm. I guess Jordan doesn't like that sort of stuff. Hey, I'm back. Grip has 204 viewers. What the hell happened? Wait, who has 204 viewers? Grip. What? Let's take a Someone ha who? Someone's hosting him, huh? Someone's gotta be host Rotterdam. Who? Oh. Rotterdam hosting. Oh. Oh, Rotterdam. I actually, when you when you started mentioning Grubs, we lost like three viewers. So I assume you gave him our three viewers. Probably. Sorry. That's all. Okay. Whatever. Right, this is gonna be on video. I'm doing I'm doing this for the for the fun of it. This is not a day job. And if I ever make it a day job, if I'm ever, like, putting that much effort into it that it's not fun anymore, eh. Yeah, I, I think about that a lot, too, with, like, streaming. It's, like, I can't imagine, like, like relying on it for money. I feel like I would be so, like, like nervous about stuff all the time, you know? Like, like game mm -hmm. coming, yeah. Yeah, it'd be so like precarious. Did you watch last night? Well, I stayed up so late because I was watching last night. Pig and Harding run into each other on ladder over and over and over and over and over and over and over again because they're in the same region. They're close enough to each other. And they're the only ones so, on the MMR hitting the button. Yeah, and, and the only ones at that region and like the same MMR that are playing this that late. So like it's just so freaking funny. For that ahead, early. Went ahead and queued up the map if you're not. And they kept playing each other. And literally at, the, at one point, Pig was like, okay, I can't play random anymore because. I can't beat him other than my Zerg, and he played him in Zerg, and he won the last three or four maps against Party. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, Party just came back, to be fair, but, like, Pig is still ridiculous. Was he the one who just finished his military service? Yeah. Okay. He's okay. one of them. And 4GG also. Oh, but wouldn't you just, I don't know. I would wonder what his military service was like. Would, like would, did he go, was he a Katusa the whole time? You know, did he know. have a lot of fans? What? Like, Hi. One of the StarCraft players got a medal for sniping. That was Bisu. Be soon. Nice. Well, I'm gonna hit this button. The last match here between Frogs and Nicro. Any predictions before I hit watch? Nicro wins. Frogs wins. I, I I'm gonna put my vote in for Frogs. Um, I like the underdog. So backwater is the map. Frogs and Nicro are the players. It's a Zerg and it's a Protoss, and it's loading. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't quite time itself out because on the bottom right hand corner in light pink the zerg hoping to beat all expectations because there are people in this stream who doubt him frugs and in the top left 
We have the man who has not lost the series yet, and that is on the line right now. It is the Teal Protoss. It is all Necro. Fantastic. Fantastic. No, we haven't seen these games. We don't know who wins. I haven't paid any attention to the win-loss ratios on, on Liquipedia, t Team Liquipedia. Team Liquipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I definitely find it's a lot more interesting to watch the matches if you don't know the results. And I normally try to stay away from that if I can. I just know there are people who do know because watching the the group selection was a fun thing to do. Um, yeah. So, you know, maybe they know that one person didn't advance, another did. Yeah, but the kind of nice thing about Round Robin 2 is that, like, um, you know... You can win a series versus one person, and like it doesn't necessarily like put you like out of the group. Yeah. So like you can still win a series and like you know not advance. So I understand. That makes a lot of sense. It's not nothing's guaranteed. I mean, a lot. Um, if we're looking at my breakdown, Frogs could win this and then win his game against Quiet in advance. Um, as long as the rest of this map. Works itself out, you know. We're, we're, as long as the rest of these maps work themselves out in that favor, in that direction, it's not impossible for them to break out of the group. Um, but Frogs is going to do uh, he's pretty standard, right? That's a that's a pretty simple build. We have pretty standard things from the Protoss here: some gateways, some pylons, some Cybernetic scores finishing up. Nothing too sexy, nothing too scary, unless I see a pylon right here in the third base. He's, is he thinking about it? Um, I don't know. No, I, I, I've never really been a fan of like the pylon blocking, to be honest. I feel like it's almost not like not worth your time. You don't think it's like the hundred minerals isn't worth it? Yeah. That's probably just fair. like especially like on this map. I feel like the Zerg is fine expanding to that bottom left base. Okay, no, I'll give you that. Oh, it's gonna be drops. 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 <laughs> Now, it is 1,000. I would When you put... say drops, you mean Evolution Chamber into Dropper Lord, but the Dropper Lord has been spotted. Uh, does he have... No, he doesn't have Overlord. Guess He's what? It just position. doesn't matter. He's it way just out of position. Matter. It just doesn't gonna... matter. He's not coming over. Oh! There's a Dropper get... Lord being morphed. Oh, yeah. Way, so you can just way... ferry them across the river there. Well, no, he's going to put it across the river and just drop them here and then go across. Okay, I see. He's skipping yeah. the wall. Okay, that's yeah, not the most sexy. obvious drop the Lord. I like Fox it. Is sexy. Too bad he's going to lose. Too bad he's going to lose. I don't know if he is. I actually don't know if he is either. But not I'm with this sense. plan. Yeah. He's, he's is, scaling the look cliff at him just like double leaf. downing on this wall that's not going to matter. With units not there to defend. And he's even going to poke across this wall. He's going to pull in some forces. Drop him, folks. Yeah, buddy. You should go back and get that one last zergling, though. He's he's misses it, missed his boat. All right, here we no, go. He's gotta, We're gonna we come go. in from That's... both sides. Ooh, an, an oracle, fly. though. Yeah. Oh, he can't decide what to do. He can't decide what to do. Um, uh, that little bit of hesitation is a very tough thing. Um, pulling the probes, and... and dropping extra crystals. Uh, the oracle is going to all say GG 14 together. kills. Oh. Let's all say GG yeah. together. G G G G G G G G. I, I'm not the one to call it. Come on. I have been as many Reddit threads, and they say calling it early is bad. But this yeah, is this not is, looking good. Um, yeah, this come is back super from this, bad. He's, he's, he's got to stop this pressure. He's at least getting a bunch of extra shield batteries out of his opponent. If he pulled back now and tried to use a little bit of time he bought to build up uh, a third base and, and pulled in some drones, but it looks like he's committing and he's running into the Zergling Shredder. Um, yeah. It wouldn't matter. This is like a tower defense. <laughs> He's playing line tower wars. He oh, he does on power. He does depower a few things. Uh, but there are just so many adepts, and this is a 13 kill oracle. This is a 24 kill adept, two, one, and four kill adepts behind him. That is. He's like, up. I'm a boss, this is how you kill things. 19, oh, that's actually kind of funny that that adept kills. has 24 kills. Because there's the two adepts in the wall, right? Yeah. So that one was literally stealing all the kills. Oh, fair enough. I mean, the double... Oh, God, there's there's so many Zerglings have died. What's 19 plus 13 plus 24 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1? 
62. Oh god, Seven, that would 72. be really impressive. I would, I would. That's just me blurring the number. Oh, he's gonna try There's, dropping again, but this. Uh, he just lost, uh, ta- lost time to 72. So he dropped a third. The oracles are gonna come down over here. You said it was 72. Yeah. It looks like the overlord things. is throwing it up. I I always like to he's imagine like shitting the zerglings. Yeah, out. there we go, pooping it up. Uh, more zerglings coming in here. He, what he should do right now is, which is so stupid and not going to happen, he should make an overseer and then drop chain lintons right where those units were, so it's a wall. Can't get those units up. That would have been oh. amazing. All right, just run him over there. Which would the, never have worked. Battery point. But you know what? Well, he's going to continue to drop. Um, it's not going to matter, though. These units, do you see it? They're going to go crossed. Um, he's got... Zergling stuck in, in the Overlord as Zerglings are coming over here to poke this wall. As Zerglings are coming over here to, to fill up on another side, he's dropping from two points. Um, trying to get away, he's going to lose that Overlord. As he's gonna no, he's not. He's base. fine. You're always he? fine. Is always he? Fine. Yep. Oh. yep. Excuse me. Excuse my analysis. But it just doesn't matter. No, you're right. Nycro is in a fantastic position. As these... Um, Oh gosh, they have gotten six more kills. Sorry, uh, four, yes, five more kills. Uh, five more drones, I suspect, which are very good things to kill. Especially when Lings are attacking the front and suiciding into adepts. You do well play. There it is. Oh, it's the, oh my god. I'm actually, while casting this, I'm on the, um, watching Grip stream, and he's doing the poopy butthole. Nice. You were just um, talking about poopy butthole. Yeah. Makes me happy inside. So, looking at it from top to bottom, um, the, well, this next match is Quiet versus Got Quail. This one is literally the biggest disparity in ELO for this entire series. Got Quail is number five. Quiet is number 34. Quiet played earlier. We're actually going to watch two Quiet games in a row. Quiet played against Nycro. He lost 0-2. Um, and he is definitely the underdog for this match. Um, Got Quail, Quiet. Any comments on this? Quiet loses. <laughs> I guess like, that's probably to be expected. <laughs> yeah, I mean, God Quail is a much better player. He's about 5,000 MMR. God Quail is about, I mean, Quiet's about, what, 41, 4,200? 800 disparity. It's a big disparity to overcome. I've seen it being overcome before, but Quiet's going to have to play some really good Terran. Terran's not even his best race. It is Zerg, um, but he likes Terran a lot better, so he's trying to become a better Terran. Okay. And, um, yeah. Right. Well, let's jump right into it. The first map is... Acid plant for this first TVZ. Um, maybe we'll see some of those Hellions you say are are just like Cyclones, but for Zerg. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think we probably won't see any Hellions that are quiet, uh, if I'm going to make a guess here. Quiet, uh, from what I've seen, Quiet really likes doing 2 on one um, He really likes his Marine Micro, stuff like that. So I think we're probably going to see him just kind of operate around like biocentric styles like that. Well, spawning. In the bottom right-hand corner, the Red Zerg, it is, got quail. And in the top left, we have in the blue, it is our Terran player, Quiet. You gotta, you gotta be more quiet about it. You say again? It's our Terran player, Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, alright. So, this map has a ramp that leads to a natural that leads to an opening, that leads to two possible thirds, uh, both of which bring you closer to the enemy and have very similar paths. Um, intersection here is a big ramp. This one is another big hallway. Yeah, um, I, I like this map for TVZ. Uh, it's pretty nice if you're playing bio. Uh, if you're playing mech, it's pretty annoying, but uh, bio I think is fine. There's lots of places to drop. You don't think there's some great mech Places for tanks to kind of see see uh, see jump and shoot across gaps. Uh, my issue on this map for playing mech is that taking the fourth base uh, is pretty hard. You have to split your units really well, or else uh, you can just get repositioned really easily. Okay. Uh, especially if you're playing versus Zerg, Zerg can just rotate their entire army so quickly. Um, especially if they're going like Hydra Bane in the start of the game, uh, which is still fairly common versus mech, and. Um, it's just really easy for the proto or not the proto sorry, the Zerg to rotate and just like uh, position your army. But yeah, I, I really like this map for bio styles. 
You just like the uh, like dropping from the different angles using all this dead space to fly. Yeah, and it just kind of like it gives you a lot of um, like places you can harass. Like you can really, if uh, you're if you like to do drops and you like to multitask, it's really good for that because there's a and uh, there's a lot of like space between. The bases too, which uh, like makes that multitasking even more important. Um, I'm not sure how far we'll see this game get, uh, and it looks like actually quite might open with uh, Hellions. I haven't watched him play for a while, but <coughs> last time I remember his games, he would normally opt for two and ones, but maybe instead opting for a Hellion style now. And it looks like that's what it's gonna be. Yep, there's that. There's that switch that lift off. There's the starport going down. We'll see what kind of add-on he drops in for the barracks. Yeah, um, I'm interested to see if uh, so. Some players either decide to go for the banshees, or they go for a really quick uh, stim from the barracks, which I think is uh, oh my god, sugar, not very optimal. Sure, but people still do it. Uh, I'll be interested to see what uh, Quiet decides to go for. Oh, there are the two hellions. I do love Nidusing on this map. Where do you put on the the natural, or the main? Main. Right up here. See how much corner. space there is? Yeah, yeah that, that's that space. Corner. Oh, that's beautiful. I think we saw a lot of that in um, last week in the GSL. Or was I... Or No, or, or am I thinking the All Invitational? It's very confusing. Watch They're both very play. similarly Very high-level mm -hmm. matches. Yes. Uh, uh, quite actually opting to go for a Liberator from the starport immediately. Um... I guess maybe just putting the tech lab on to, like, threaten banshees. I guess. You threaten sure. it. Um, is liberator range is still a thing, right? Yeah, uh, I don't really see many people go for that early game. It looks like he will be opting for that quick stim. Well, and he's still, it's still a decision here whether he stays mech or not. Like he hasn't committed to a direction to a to a tech path yet. Yeah. Um, well, like getting the stim, I, I imagine he keeps that right. Like he's not going to cancel. Maybe he does, I don't know. But... No, sure, sure, sure. But I wouldn't call Stim a commitment. Yeah, I mean, you can't go uh, from one to the other. It's when I start seeing uh, maybe another factory versus another barracks go down, whether I see the, the, the upgrades going one direction or another. And this is the Liberator. Hello, Liberator. Oh, hello, Liberator. Yeah, uh, kind of not positioned, actually, as well as it could be. Uh, it doesn't even hit that one patch. That's pretty unfortunate. You're right. It's not hitting anything. Um... I think with all these, I mean, I gotta really, I would, I think it's really hard to find good liberator positioning these days. They've, they've shrunk the range so far back so it can no longer be easily abused that I, I think people are having a hard time finding normal uses for it. Yeah, uh, I think most turns tend to opt for getting that Banshee out because it's, uh, has a lot more uses. Mm -hmm. But, uh, per, I think the liberators look really nice. If you don't like um, the multitasking, or if you're uncomfortable with it, uh, right. the liberator is kind of like a like a less APM intensive uh, replacement, if we want to say that. That's fair. You send you fire and forget, get into a good position. You can queue up uh, the use of its ability and keep going with the rest of your army, as long as you're willing to sacrifice it and not pick it up again. This liberator coming over here has already found queens, uh, pushing it away. And that's four color will finish up just in time to uh really block looks like we will have queen in position unless he goes to the natural. I might hide back there, leave the liberator there. Uh hopefully it gets forgotten. Yeah, you bring him back in at a later time. Sure, sure. Uh, we are seeing a mix of bio well, okay, so now he is switching was... in the bio. Yeah, but he's getting a lot of Hellions. Normally if you're if you're playing bio, uh you might commit to six to eight Hellions sure. uh, max. Uh, this could be a, with the lack of a third base in sight, this could be a Hellbat push. I mean, a good Hellbat medevac push, backed up by, uh, followed up by Marines, isn't a bad thing? Yeah, like, this is, this can be a pretty strong build. Um, we've seen back when Cure was doing really well in Legacy of the Void, uh, he was doing, like, builds like this all the time, and knocking out really good players. Um... We haven't really seen Hellbats as strong in the meta recently. Yeah. Um, yeah. but still, like... This is, this can definitely be useful, especially since Hydras aren't going to be out by the time this hits. Looking over here in the production tab, he, he does he's he's getting his upgrades. Banelings on the way, Lings on the way. Taking a quick look at the unit tab, 
Uh, 64 drones to 50 SEVs, a good difference in income coming down as this fight kicks off. Yeah, These banelings uh, will do work. Yeah, Quiet's really going to have to split it really well here. Um, okay, look. That is, these are pretty nice splits, these actually. Very good splits. That's very impressive. Um, we'll see what these help. They really lose two medivacs, though. So that's four call. That's four caller did work. He's, he's getting out of there with a small force, but yeah, no, it's easily pushed away. That four yeah. caller was amazingness. That was the most oh, important part man. of that freaking <laughs> Absolutely no impact uh, there. Uh, that army did nothing. It looks like he's going to try to come around here. Look at that oversaturation. Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. What yeah, are that. Looking? Like, those are really nice splits, but, like, oh, yeah. the wasted bane lanes weren't really that effective. Like, he, so he lost 11 bane lanes and about six or seven zerglings in that fight. Yeah. Um, not really worth it. Nope. I'd say not. Quiet does need. He's going to be expanding soon. Uh, over, over and under saturation on both of his bases. Um,. That's the way to do it. Uh, a little early, I think, for burning those mines. But I guess it gives him a, a fallback point. Uh, he needs to pick him back up, though. He is way too far ahead to be... Uh... There we go. Was pretty that big hits there. That was good. That was three bane lanes for, like, ten marines, so... Oh, and then we have a, a counterattack over here. Lings are poking pressure at the SCVs as they transfer. That Those oversaturated uh, SCVs... Being pushed back manual, only a handful of marines here to defend and push him back. The fight back over here, great bailing connections, I can only assume, is there's a GG. Got Coil pick game one. Um, one. We definitely got to see, like, what I, I think are some of Quiet's like, trademarks there, though, was, like, his good micro for the most part. Yeah. And uh, his, like, bio usage. Uh, that Hobat push was pretty nice. I like that. Um, I just think it was, like, Against a lesser player, I think that definitely could have killed. But sure. uh, against Gawquil, I think Gawquil knew what was going on and he prepared accordingly. Oh, we are going into game two on um, Blackpink. Very nice. I'm, kinda... I'm, I'm pumped. I, I have I'm Siegfried pumped. still. I am yeah. pumped. Um, I mean, you have Siegfried still. You have me. <laughs> I have you. I have Siegfried. I assumed we'd lost Siegfried by now because he's got people and social yeah. obligations. And you're going to lose me because my eyes are going to close and never open up. Oh, no. Yeah, after this series, I'm probably going to go. Got to pick up a friend. Um, yeah, I might be leaving you, too. I will, I will solo cast the last game. It's fine. Uh -huh. I can do it, and I can keep talking near constantly as I hit this button and go into game number two. In the bottom left-hand corner, the Red Zerg, it has got Quail. And in the top right corner, he is definitely not quiet. It is on quiet. Why the name? Do you know where that came from? I have no idea. I'm not sure. Uh, he he has a his or had a history of changing his name pretty, uh, pretty constantly. Yeah, no, he can't. Well, what was his uh, I remember his name before that. I just can't. It was ne Neshabu. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then I can't remember what the other one was. I mean, quite uh, a good name. That's a good Starcraft name. Yeah. Mine is the most beautiful steak you could possibly have. So. I enjoy it. You like the ribeye more than the like to say like the filet mignon? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I like filet mignon, but it's if if I were to if there's any arguments made because ribeye is more juicy, fatty. It has more of a taste to it. The filet mignon is more of a prime cut, so it's more. Um, it's like it's not like better meat, but it's it's a different style. Um, not much fat on it, so it's not as juicy, but it is a very clean cut. Um, then you got what's it called? Uh, porterhouse. It's between porterhouse and ribeye. All right, another fatty cut. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little blasphemous right here. Uh, my favorite mm -hmm. beef is the cheeseburger. What kind of cheeseburger? It don't matter. It's that that cacophony of of. Bread, cheese, bacon, <laughs> burger, maybe even an egg. Oh man! Well, you need okay. First of all, the best burgers have fried egg on top. You 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 like a good Red Robin burger? I don't eat Red Robin, but I've had it places where they have great burgers. So it's you need burger, you need cheese, you need uh, lettuce, tomato. You can have you don't, sure, uh, sure. but it is good to have. Um, you also need bacon. 
me being Jewish, I don't care about being kosher. You need bacon, and um, <laughs> you need a fried egg. That is the thing, and you need I, good bread on top. I don't think but, you need a. I don't think you need a good fried egg. Like a fried egg is I a think, plus, but I think you don't without, need it. I think it's still better than a steak without the fried egg. Yes. Oh, so you're a burger guy too. I'm a total burger guy. It's not my favorite thing. Steak's better in my opinion, but okay. burgers are good. Uh, also, uh, Quiet, one of his old years' names was Your Base. My roommate just closed his door because I was being told. Thank you. Yeah, oh. Whatever. Your roommate. Oh, here we go. Here's a uh, proxy starport. Your roommate closed your door. Close Mine brought door. me coffee. Oh, look at you. Mm. Proxy starport. What are the odds of this working? Um, nah. well, let's see. Um, and Ghost Academy? Is this, this is this like a variant of specials build from WCS Leipzig? I mean, what does this do for us? What does the Proxy Starport do? Faster Banshee? Banshee's oh, he's getting across Liber. the map pretty quick. Uh, it's pretty I, heavily supply blocked, though. I, I don't even like the Liberator. Heavily supply blocked. He's got two about to finish. Yeah, he's making two, so, okay. So yeah, he's going Ghost Hellion. I, I just don't get with a, what a Liberator arriving a few seconds faster does for you. Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. Oh, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm being too critical. At this point, he's because hoping there that... are sp there are sport crawler timings where you can get it out before the sport crawler can ever get up. But okay. Liberator, I mean, it's same gonna, shit, I guess. It's going to be out a few seconds before the sport crawler. Sport crawler is going to be out of position. Um, he might get himself something before the uh, Queens find a good position, especially if he pushes the Hellions up the ramp and holds them back. He could sit on this ramp, force a fight with the Queens, and then find himself in a good position with the Liberator. If all that well, comes through... Guess what? He's well, all-in. He, he is a member of all-in. What's the... <laughs> no, no, he's all-in. He, he, yeah, I know, all he's all-in. All he's on the team. That's why he's all <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> um, here here uh, comes the, the Liberator. He's finding a position here. I don't like that oh, position. Wow. <laughs> he's like, I do not like, like that position. That is, a, that like is a, how you know he's a third player. That's like a gangster liberator. It's like hold it sideways. <laughs> yeah. More accurate. I agree with that, Siegfried. <laughs> um, he's going to come up here. And he's going to find nothing in the third base. The Hellions were pushed out. Um, I think his time is limited. I give him another minute and a half. Uh, he's got to make something happen in a minute and a half, or he might as well GG. Yeah. I'm really liking this, though. This is like... That liberator is, is going to stay alive. I, I'm liking that quiet is like... He's cheesy. He's, yeah. Well, he, he's he realizes loose. what it takes. Yeah, like... Uh, what a surround. Yeah. The thing is, um, I'm not gonna. I have Riser in my group. I'm not gonna cheese against her. I'm probably gonna one game I'll cheese probably, and the other game I'll just you know be practice for me. Is that like win one cheese life. and then practice two more games? Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I win one cheese, but I doubt it. I have to be perfect. Well, we're looking over here. We're seeing the the Hellions and the Ghosts starting to gather up. The uh, Liberator actually providing a base of fire and cover this time, not going for the um, not going straight for the drone kills. Uh, he does need to get out of there and pick up, although we do have um, units here that can take up the spore crawler. They're going to have to face down the roaches and the lings as they continue to push forward in the pressure. Uh, we do have one SCV who's decided he's going to fight. He's going to be a big man, and he takes a shot, saving the life of at least one Hellion. Nope. Oh, oh snipe. No. Boom. 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 Excellent, excellent control here uh, on the part of Quail. Perfect responses, and we, we get the did. GG. Alright, um, I'm going to cry myself to sleep. Yeah. Thank you for letting me cast. Uh, yeah, it was a pleasure as always. Thank you. And um, I, of course, will do it again. Siegfried, it is always a pleasure. Anytime you want to practice, because I don't think I've ever played against you, I would be happy to. Mm. All right. I'll hit you up sometime. Yeah, absolutely. See you, dude. See you, dudes. See you, and, dude. Uh, I guess I'll be leaving as well. <laughs> All right. Um, we are leaving you in common. Oh, and remember, make sure to um, host Mr. Grip. Mr. Grip, can you send me a um, PM with this? Yes, link? I will. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I will. I will host one of our own. So we're going to go into the last game. This one is going to be Frogs and Quiet. These are the two underdogs in this group. Um, if I'm looking at these scores right and I understand... They're already out. They're already out. They're just yeah. doing this for... Um... Shits and giggles. There you go. And maybe these were their first matches, and I'm doing it completely out of order, and these matches mattered. But stay tuned for some absolutely middle of the road Shit games. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say Frogs wins that 2 1, if I were fine. to guess. Okay. Win the 2 1, if I were to guess. Okay. Well, good luck with the rest of the cast. Hey, yeah, good luck.
All right. Um, yeah. And uh, guys who's watching, stay tuned. Uh, you'll be watching some last good matchup and also some triple lore. So enjoy. Uncommon, you do a great job. And, you know, just keep getting better, kid. Thanks, friend. Yeah, I will talk to you later. Bye, friend number one. Bye, friend number two. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for hanging around. It is the final game of Group D. And um, you all have been a wonderful audience. Uh, for you didn't catch the whole thing, it will be up on YouTube approximately an hour or two after this, as it takes a little bit of time to process. This first map is Catalyst, L-E. Um, Frogs versus Quiet. I get to go right into this game. I get to click this watch solo button, and it's going to start loading in. I have my coffee. I have... Actually, a voice chat I'm looking forward to joining. It is getting pretty heavy. Some of you guys are fantastic. Lenny's up there. Uh, Tech 4 is in their wagon. Uh, so I'll see y'all in a moment. But for now, spawning in the top left-hand corner in the light pink, it is all in's frogs. And in the bottom right-hand corner, the blue Terran, we're looking for some good games. We're looking to see some action. It's all in's quiet. All right. So I'm going to look at this map, and I'm going to see some things that I might like to see. So... If I take a look at these bases, and we'll assume, you know, they're absolutely mirrored. There's a lot of dead space over here, and this caution points to a good Reaper jump, if I'm not mistaken. Let me look over here where I can see it. Yeah, a good Reaper jump. So we could see some scouting coming in this position, giving a multiple avenues approach to get away. He can get away over here. He can get away over here. Um, so, you know, two avenues of approach for uh, for a jump. Now we take a look over here, we see a barracks building. And while this barracks is going down, oh, this little guy's going to come over. Hey, little guy. I'm a little SUV, and I'm going to come over here and do some scouting. Oh, what am I scouting? I'm going to scout the enemy. But maybe, let's take a look at where he's going. Looks at this green line. A green line. He's going to scout. Uh, not to say he's not going to go build some sneaky buildings, but for now, he's scouting. And he moves his way across this map, takes that ramp, goes directly under the Overlord, and he sees there's a natural. He knows his opponent is not doing anything too fast. He doesn't have an immediate response. So he's going to circle around here once. He's going to see the spawning pool. He's going to see this gas is up. He's going to see... A standard opening. Now, this tells him not to worry in the next couple of minutes. He's kind of fine, at least for about a minute and a half. Uh, after that, anything's going. So what's he going to decide to do with this? Looks like he's saving up minerals. Quiet needs to be expanding. So this little uh, SCV is going to come down here. He's going to take some minerals. He's started the transformation uh, on his command center. And with the remaining minerals, he has 400. And he's going to make himself a nice little natural. He's going to try to macro up and get this game going. Coming up over here, take a look at the spawning pool. Hi there, spawning pool. I got a little bug inside me. Let's take a look at that little bug. He is swimming his little tail off. You are going to be the the spawner of things. You've been able to zerg to have zerglings and queens and speed. And if you look real close, it looks like there's stuff in there still. Like an overlord's reflection. Deep into your soul. Zoom back out here. Let's take a look. We do have the Reaper coming around. He's going to go scout and see if anything has changed, if anything drastically has happened. Uh, at the moment, there's nothing to see. Um, nothing to immediately respond to. Back at home, he's building his factory. He's building a reactor. We're going to see some uh, Hellion play again. A nice early group of Hellions coming out. We're going to have this Reaper playing Reaper games with Lings. As long as he's off that creep and controls it well, he's fine. He might even get a Ling out of this. Um, but if he stirs too far into creep trying to get that kill, it's not going to go in his direction. Uh, decides he's going to back up a little bit and uh, take a deep breath as I have a sip of coffee. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Reaper's going back in. He's going to take a look. Hi, there's a queen there now. I can't stay there. Queen, boom, as the queen gets backed up and pushed along the edge and takes a few steps. This queen's got this Reaper's number. This Reaper can't get in. Now, remember, there's this step, and while it's being guarded, he could still get at least get in and take a look around in the main base and see what he would see. If he would, he would see there's roaches coming. He would see that there are potentially going to be roaches in production at some point in the future. But this Reaper continues to poke around. Now, if you can take a look back here. At uh, Quiet's base, he's got the starport going on. What does he make it first out of starport? I'm going to say it's going to be a liberator. This is liberator is going to come out. He's going to try to poke. And if history tells us much, he's not going to get a lot done. But he does like getting into a good position. There is nothing sweeter than a liberator finding a good spot and just getting drone one, drone two, drone three. And this reaper is going to find himself surrounded by lings. And he's going to die a horrible death. Coming down here, we do have hellions. are going to be able to push back any kind of counterattack or, or poke. As lings are streaming across the map, as you can see, uh, lings and roaches. Actually, really good use here. I like how the roaches are directing the traffic, and the lings are set to follow. They're so much faster, but you don't want them to arrive separately. You want one united army. Now, here we go. He's now spotted. 
he now knows that there are Hellions. He doesn't have to worry, though, because he is directly prepared for Hellions. Coming across the map to join in this fight are more units, more Lings, no longer falling Roaches. They're coming at their own speed. They march at the beat of their own drum as they're fast, and they're ready to reinforce this group. Ladies and gentlemen, the Roaches get a Marine. The Marine up here, which was poking at the Overseer, is now dead. All right, so Deliberate it looks like he took a moment to get that in position. It actually flew out trying to rally across the map. Um, this too bad is actually a few seconds late on this ramp. That is going to force the roaches back. They can't contest. They can't shoot up roaches, by the way. Don't shoot up. Now, what does shoot up? Ravagers. Very good against handling liberators. Now he's going to reposition, and he's going to force these ravagers to take this out. Now, this is actually an interesting position because he can hit a liberator, uh, the uh, factory, and the supply depot all in one hit. It even scares the liberator away. It's going to allow his units to come up here and start doing more. Um, it is an odd position. We do have some SCVs hiding here. Um, trying to get away, but Quiet is in a very precarious position. He's got to repair at the right pace. He's got to not pull too many SCVs to do the repairing. He can't lose too many of them to these Ravagers. He's got to make sure this Liberator's in a good, solid position that can both defend and not leave itself vulnerable. Luck, um, smartly, he did pull down his Orbital Command. He's going to continue to produce out of this. Back home, we do have Lings for Frogs. He's not expanding anymore. He's not building any more drones. He's constantly reinforcing this army. He feels like he's got this under wraps. He's just got to keep going. He's got to keep pushing. As we watch, these Ravagers are doing excellent damage. One volley uh, from all six of them should do significant damage, probably to the floor. That was uh, probably uh, not, not where he wanted to aim, but that unit was on fire. It, he did lose it anyway as he tries to uh, get his SCVs out of there. Now he's actually in a fantastically dirty position as this Overseer is giving him all the vision he needs to make the shot. Now this Marine is trying to push it away, uh, but he's getting a canceled bunker. He's going to get some excellent shots off on his Cyclones, and Quiet is hoping to push back, but... Who knows what an all enforcer do here if he lands some really good corrosive bile. Lings get through. Uh, that Liberator is going to be taken down with a handful of corrosive biles. He's going to force all these Cyclones back trying to get the damage they can. He's pulling the boys as the SCVs are doing what they can, but they're going down to Lings. They're going down to, to Ravagers. These Cyclones are getting the work they need to get done. Just not anywhere fast enough as he pulls in uh, the G. G. That was actually a very quick game. Uh, six minutes and 22 seconds. First win for Frogs. Game two. Going to take place on one of my favorite maps. At least to say, this one's going to be on Black Pink. Now, that last game, we had some fantastic early pressure. Uh, kind of roach into full-on Ravager Ling. And when you start getting the Ravagers out that early, it is very hard to deal with as a Terran. Especially if the timings are good, and the micro is good, and you continue to flood units behind that. The Terran's in a very difficult position. He can't produce units anywhere near as fast or anywhere near in the bulk as long as the injects are up by the Zerg. He doesn't have the production facilities going, and a well-timed timing attack um, ends the game quickly, at least if you're not prepared, if you don't have the right units and the right bunkers down. I expect we might see a lot more of that as um, Frogs faces quiet one more time, trying to bring this home in a 2-0. Uh, it is a best of three. Frogs has won the first game. In the bottom left-hand corner, the light pink Zerg bringing in minerals, trying to take this game 2-0. It is Frugs. In the top left-hand corner, the blue Terran hoping to bring home... Let me go ahead and double-check all his scores. His second win of the group qualifier stage, and at least go home with a little bit of pride. It is quiet. Now, we do see something happening here. He has sent two SCVs across the map. It does look like he's going to proxy something, so one way or the other, this will be a quick game. As the first unit drops the barracks. The second SCV should be joining him for what I assume will be three to four barracks, in which he will push out Marines. There are no gases coming out. Now, in response to this, we do have uh, not just necessarily the worst thing Frogs could do, but he is uh, opting for a macro-oriented build. So he's going to be a little bit on the back foot. He's probably going to have to sacrifice this natural if all the timings work out. And uh, he pushes fast and furious enough with his um, with his Marines. We do are going to see a full wall. Still no more. Oh, he is going to opt for a gas. So we'll see what he decides to do with that gas. Now, if, if you don't know, um, if you drop a... Oh, he is going to spot it. Ladies and gentlemen, um... Frogs is absolutely no. There you go. Frogs is absolutely seen 
uh, all these barracks. Now his re immediate response is going to be maybe to drop some stuff. Uh, maybe we're going to see a barracks here right against this. Uh, there we go. Barracks or a bunker. Excuse me, a bunker uh, right against this hatchery. Uh, give his marines a good base of fire. Uh, but we are going to see drones coming out here to stop this from happening. Uh, absolutely excellent response, exactly what he needed to do. Um, this SCV is not going to finish it. He's actually not going to have enough barracks to do any damage. So he's already sending uh, a Marine over way too early. He's panicking. He's realized he's been seen. You don't want to lose your Marines in this fashion. Um, we are going to have a spine crawler here as they're going to make sure that each Marine that comes pays for this with their lives. Now... This SCV, unsure what to do, kind of come join the join this fight. Now this marine can take out uh, can take out these drones, uh, but this was the perfect distraction that Frugs needed to get a couple units out. He has done an excellent job defending this, an excellent job scouting this. That was a great second overlord to send over in this direction. Uh, as these links come out and dwindle these marines one at a time, Quiet is never going to be able. Uh, or should not be able to produce enough marines uh, to ever build up enough to threaten this. We do have more lings and spine crawlers going down. He's already lifted the barracks and he knows he's got to bring them home. Uh, back home we do have a, a factory building. Maybe he's going to hope to switch it to some Hellions and hold this door. Uh, but Frogs, uh, what he decides to do now really will shape the rest of the game. Behind this you see he is producing uh, more, more drones. He's got to catch up to the worker supply. He knows that Terran has been constantly building them the entire time. And his job now is to return fire. Uh, this spine crawl is going to prevent any future aggression, but it looks like he's being a little sneaky. He's going to drop these barracks back where they were. Now, this means that Frugs assumes uh, he's taking these barracks home, uh, but he's going to instead build up for a counterattack. He's actually already rallied them into a dangerous position. Uh-oh, ladies and gentlemen, we have Frugs coming here. Is he going to see these barracks? Is he out of sight? of these barracks. And nope, he's going to spot the barracks have landed again and he's going to know exactly how to respond. That is absolutely unfortunate that he's decided to bring these uh, back in that direction. And there they are. They're in position again, but the lings are already on their way. They're already coming over here to clean this up and they're going to get all of these marines. They're going to hit these buildings again. There goes the cancellation to lift up and he's going to move them. Not even trying to move them home, just moving away to the other, other edge of the map. Um, we do have uh, Hellion's being built. He's trying to double expand behind this as he's let his... Oh, sorry. Uh, he's not going to double expand behind this. He's going to put down a starport. He's got a lot of minerals saved up. He's been unable to use most of his production facilities. Looks like he's sending one home somewhere, and he's sending the other off to the edge of the map. I really hope we don't have a, like, flying all buildings to the edge of the map and hiding them. Um, but he is going to look like he's going to land it, both of them again, just a little farther away. He's going to double down on the production of the Marines. Maybe if he doesn't send them directly into the fight, he gets away with this so he can have some time to, to push out of here. If we take a look at his worker count, they are about equal. He doesn't have a second base, however. Uh, the army supply uh, for Frogs is more than enough to handle what's immediately happening. Uh, but we are getting hell, uh, Hellbats and Cyclones one to two at a time. Uh, there's the Medivac here, going to provide great support. Uh, but I still think... Quiet needs to put down another base. He needs to expand if he's going to stay in this fight. Uh, he cannot double down on the all-in. Uh, the economy of the Zerg is just growing, and it's going to continue to grow at a, at a pace that he can't handle. You don't want to be more than one base behind on a Zerg. Now, this time we have two queens. We have evolution chambers, a gas on the natural. Uh, down here for the Zerg. Uh, no additional tech buildings. It looks like he's opting to absolutely macro up, and I would absolutely be doing the same thing if I were him. Uh, putting down spore crawlers on each base because he has seen uh, heavy liberator play uh, coming from his opponent, and I can only expect he actually took the time to start uh, combat shields and a reactor. Now, this is sketchy. Uh, almost never. I, I don't know if I would have chosen to take the time and the resources to put down a reactor when you could have afforded uh, more upgrades or um, more buildings. He is doubling down on this location. Uh, you cannot lift off an add-on. So this reactor, um, this upgrade, which he's hoping finishes, I believe combat shields finish a little quicker, um, are going to be enough. And as soon as this location is, is spotted, that add-on isn't going to do the job anymore. Uh, oh, I missed the drop over here as he brought his medevac and a handful of Hellions and Hellbats over here to do as much damage as they could. Uh, no kills from these two Hellions. I can only imagine there were a couple drones um, that were lost before I spotted it. But the Marines over here... Doubling down again on this position. They are unable to get a queen. They're getting surrounded by lings. I expect to see a GG any moment as this queen absolutely crawls away to sna snail's pace. Um, these units are still being produced. He's going to drop these Hellions over here. There's the GG. Frogs wins the series. 
2-0, and that's going to finish out uh, Group Delta as uh, Nicro and Got Quail uh, kind of glided easily out of their group, and the fight between the two of them was a 1-2, was a really strong series, and that's it. That's all invitational group qualifiers uh, C, uh, D, 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 D. So we have uh, one more group that hasn't been casted. Uh, I'll probably take another day and, and do that sometime this weekend. So if you're tuning in, uh, I'll kind of broadcast those times and keep that information going. Uh, for everybody else, this is going to be on YouTube. If you miss most of it, again, in about another hour, I'll post those videos. So thank you for watching. Thank you again to Ribeye. And thank you again to uh, Siegfried for joining me. I'm going to go ahead and call this. And I do have somebody I'm going to host. So stay tuned and add a couple of viewers down to his stream. So thank you for watching.